final day of a very unusual 2020 Mac football season has arrived. It is sunny, dry, unseasonably warm here in Toledo, Ohio. It's the Central Michigan Chippewas have made the short drive down from Mount Pleasant to take on the Toledo Rockets. Let's take a look at those Mac standings on this final day of the regular season in the East. Buffalo has already clinched. 4-0, they will play Akron today. Meanwhile, in the West, this is where the action is. Western and Ball State doing battle today for the West Championship. Meanwhile, Central and Toledo, both 3-2. and two. Welcome to the booth, my friends. David Wilson, along with the former star safety of the Michigan Wolverines, and my partner today, Marcus Ray. Great to have you with us for college football here on ESPN. So, Marcus, here you have 3-2 and two on both sides, Central and Toledo, just a play or two, a lucky bounce away from maybe being in the championship conversation. Yeah, Toledo, six to seven points away from being undefeated. Central Michigan, winners of their three of their first four, lost a track meet to Western Michigan. Both of these teams are very capable. They're talented. And Central Michigan needs to do better on third down and ball control, and I think they'll have a shot against the conference's number one defense. Well, one of the developing stories in this game is backup quarterbacks, Marcus. Both teams have had to go to their backups, and they have been very effective on both sides. You see Ty Brock, Carter Bradley. Let's talk about both of them right now. Ty Brock has taken the reins of the Chippewas and done very well, completing 63% of his passes. Yeah, if you're going to win at the college level, every team needs two quarterbacks. Ty Brock showed you he could be extremely productive in that come from behind win, 25 points in the fourth quarter against Eastern Michigan a couple of weeks ago. Last week didn't have a great game, but he, he still showed you that he can get it done, which is why he's still in the lineup 6'4". He can move around. He's deceptively athletic. Well, on the Rockets' side, Carter Bradley got called into action last week with the injury to Eli Peters. All he did was come up with one of the best performances in school history. Yeah, he had a career day. I mean, he's, he's the son of a NFL coach. This young man understands where to go with the football, has a high football IQ. He can make all the throws. So to come in last week and have a career day in completions and yards and touchdowns speaks a lot about that young man. It is Central and it is Toledo, a Mac West battle. We'll have the kickoff and all of the action for you coming up next here on ESPN. And welcome back to the Glass Bowl. Central and Toledo getting ready to wrap up the regular season. Both teams three and two vying for that uh, four and two. Good momentum feel heading into the offseason. But boy, Marcus, look at those flags. Wind will be a factor today. It is very nice and warm here in Toledo for a December 12th. But uh, wind will be a factor. Coaches will have to keep an eye on. It. Yeah, definitely. And the wind only affects the pass game. Central Michigan really needs to come in here, try to run the football and establish some clock to keep this high-powered offense of Toledo off the field. But the wind really only matters when it's at your back and you're throwing that long ball. But when it's in your face, it can really sail some of your passes. So Bradley's going to have to keep an eye on that as he drops back to try to air it out. Well, Central will receive. Toledo won the toss. They deferred to the second half. And so... Kobe Lewis and Darius Bracey are back deep for Central. They'll be in their white uniforms. They made the trip down today. And arrived here at the field at about 1 o'clock. UT. Three wins, two losses. And coming off a big win against Northern Illinois on the road last week. Wind already a factor, blowing the ball off the tee. There you go. Might have to have to hold her, hold it. Go Charlie Brown and <laughs> Lucy. Thomas Clucky will get the ball teed up once again. Well, Marcus, it was great to talk with all of the coaching staffs from both teams. And I think unanimously just extremely grateful to be able to play all six of their games. Yeah, I mean, the season got canceled at one point. Then next thing you know, they announced a six-game conference schedule. And you don't get many when you play the game of football. Well, with the wind at his back, that one goes booming into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. And so Central Michigan will come out first and 10. We had some rain earlier today. Sun has come out. Limited fans here today, so we're going to hear some activity down below. That's going to be nice. 
definitely. These families out to see these fellas play their last game of 2020. Got plenty of fans now on both sides, too. Well, there you see Ty Brock. He'll bring the central offense out. First down and 10, first play from scrimmage. Great to have you with us today. Brock will throw it out of the backfield and hits Lewis and picks up about seven. I like the play call on first down. When you can move the ball, it's play action against the Toledo's front four, sometimes five, leaked out the back, put some pressure on that linebacker. It was a good play. Shotgun snap. They'll put it in the hands of Lewis, and he is dragged down from behind after a short game close to the line to gain. Now maybe looking at about third down and four. Let's take a look at those impact players, Marcus. Our impact players. You see, Lewis is one of them. He's already been extra busy, and then Khalil Pimpleton. He is. He is. A, he is a jitterbug in that slot. He's a home run guy. So they're going to move him around. You may see him in the Wildcat too at quarterback. Back to throw, Brock. Airs it out. Beautiful catch. Drayton Law brings it in near midfield. 19-yard pickup. Good for the first down. We'll see it again right here. Nice touch. Well, that's a that's great ball placement by Ty Brock, and especially when you're throwing to a receiver who's 6'4". Plenty of swag. You saw the catch radius. The ball was away from his body, and he caught the ball at his highest point. Drayton lost 10th catch of the season. First down Chippewas, and now Brock will have to scramble for it. Making for the sideline. Actually split two tacklers there and got an extra two or three yards. Marcus, nice run. And that's why I said he was deceptively athletic because he extended that play. Great cover downfield by the Rockets. Nothing was there. He was able to avoid a negative play, something that they've been experiencing on first down. And then he turned something into nothing for a pretty decent game. So the Chippewas early, punching it into Toledo territory. Ball at the 44. Just underway, getting warmed up. Here at the Glass Bowl, Toledo and Central Michigan. Chippewa blew out the Rockets last year. Little jet sweep moving out to the far side. It's going to get close to the first down. Central putting it on the ground. Marcus, a little bit of a surprise there. Hill carried the football. See our defensive impact players over there, Don, the, I'm sorry, Deontay Johnson, the Johnson brothers. <laughs> yeah, Deswan Johnson, both getting a, a lot of accolades from the coaches this week. Definitely. Templeton in at the Wildcat quarterback. Right now they hand it up the middle. Ball came loose. I think he was down, but we'll see how they sort it out. Lou Nichols got the handoff from Khalil Pimpleton. Keep an eye on number 88, Marcus Khalil. Wildcat quarterback, great receiver, will run the ball. True athlete. Yeah, and that's why we put him as one of our impact players. Eventually, he's going to keep that handoff. But right now, they're going to keep him honest. That was, a, that was an excellent run by Nichols. He's going to have to hold the ball. Looks like he was down. Lou Nichols, one of the two primary backs for Central Michigan. Kobe Lewis, the other. Back to throw Pempleton. He'll get rid of it quickly. Pass in the flat is caught out there across the 25 out near the 20 yard line. Hauled in by Ja'Cory Sullivan. Sullivan out of Muskegon, Michigan. One of their top targets. His 15th catch of the year, Marcus. Yeah, well, you see Pimpleton actually sold that screenplay, made it look like a drop back pass, and, and they're not going to ask him to throw the ball vertically down the field, but he was a high school quarterback. So, I mean, this is in his arsenal to be able to be a multi-position guy to give them a chance to have success. Pimpleton hooking up with uh, Sullivan, both from Muskegon, Michigan. Direct snap this time. Pimpleton wide open, caught, touchdown. Lewis out of the backfield, holds it in. 18-yard strike, Central Michigan up 6-zip. I'm going to tell you right now, Dave, that was one of the most well-designed plays I've ever seen. And when you see an athletic guy like Pimpleton who sold the run first, gave you a play-action look, Lewis stayed available, ran his wheel route up the sideline, everybody's all eyes were on 88 Pimpleton, and he threw it back. That was a great play call, well executed. And right now, this offense has the number one defense in this conference on their heels. Marshall Meter adds the PAT. Seven to nothing, Central Michigan. Eight play, 75-yard drive. 
Kobe Lewis holds it in from Khalil Pimpleton. Toledo ball when we come back. Well, there you see Jim McElwain, the veteran head coach, head man at Central Michigan. Took them to the MAC championship game a year ago. And uh, he's a happy man, Marcus, and some excellent play calling. I know you like the way they ran that first drive. Well, when, when we were on the call this week, they talking to Coach McElwain. You know, he told us, you know, expect to see some wrinkles. It, it's, it's the last game of the year. They've had a lot of injuries. They Guys have moved all around. And most importantly, everyone is bought in. So when you ask a guy like Hill to come in as a true freshman listed as a defensive back and run a jet sweep, he wasn't on the scouting report. And then Pendleton comes out, gets some points on the board. Well, an up back is going to catch that squib kick and a very short uh, return by Doug Bates. See, going back to the touchdown, Lewis did a great job of acting like he didn't have the ball, and, and the Rockets just lost track of him. And that's what happens when you get a running quarterback, a lot of misdirection, and that offensive line it has been banged up too. But if, if, if you can trick the defense, Keep them honest for a second. Makes a place. All right, first possession for the Rockets. There you see Carter Bradley. What a week last week. And a win at Northern Illinois. 432 yards passing. That was seventh in school history. It is out of Jacksonville, Florida. 6'3", 210-pound sophomore running the show. Here in this regular season finale for the Rockets. They start out at the 35-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground right between the tackles. Bryant Kobach is their featured back. You see Bryant right there, number 22. Kobach, uh, the transfer out of Kentucky where he started his college career, but he is a local product out of Holland, Ohio. Empty backfield on second down. Bradley line drive pass over the middle. Take a look at those impact players, Marcus. What do you think on offense? Well, they got a couple of guys. I mean, it, it was it was tough to choose, but when you talk about Kobach, pretty good running back, six foot two oh five. I love how he runs it between the tackles. We got Isaiah Winstead. Young man had a big game last week, eight catches, 106 yards. So uh, Toledo has all the weapons, but when you have a guy who can run it inside and it starts to set up guys like Winstead on the outside. Winstead, number 14, he's gonna line up as a slot receiver. The lower part of your screen there. Third down and seven. Rockets with the first possession. Central up by a touchdown early. Trying to go to Kobach out of the backfield. George Douglas on the coverage. And a fourth down. The Rockets are going to go three and out. It's a big stand for the Chippewas to come out, score some points on the road in this conference, which is tough to, tough to do. Then get a three and out on the first possession coming off a red hot game last week for Toledo that speaks volumes has to for their confidence but I don't think either side expected this to be lopsided I think both teams felt like they had a chance that if they executed they could get it done Bailey Flint the punter gets a nice bounce Pimpleton's going to go back to get it might have been a bad decision he is spinning all over the place and gets wiped out back at the three maybe the two yard line 51-yard punt. Well, you're taught if the ball is over your head, if you're on the 10-yard line, go ahead and let it go. Pimpleton's a playmaker. The ball bounced. He probably wasn't sure. But but that's a great punt because it outkicked the blocking. So, really, he didn't have any blocking until he just let the ball go. Well, Daniel Bolden finally wiped him out as we look back to that uh, first drive by the Chippewas. They put seven on the board. Pimpleton really helping to ignite that first score. And so here we go, back to offense for the Chippewas with 97 yards ahead of them. Kobe Lewis diving right. It's about two yards out to the five-yard line. We're talking to Coach Charlie Fry, the offensive coordinator for the Chips. He really believed they needed to run in football, something they haven't been able to do a whole lot consistently. But, but he really clearly said they need to move the football on the ground, ball control, and protect it. He puts it into the stomach of Lewis, and he is ridden down to the turf. Might have gotten a yard. Nicely done by the Rockets as they trapped him down. 
Linebacker Jonathan Jones made the stop. See right now, one thing Toledo does well is they, is they crowd the football. They keep it inside and in front, and they play with a lot of gap integrity. And that's coming from the words of Coach McElwain on our call as well. He really felt like they played with gap integrity. Third down and six. And again, they run right over the right tackle, and waves of Rockets force a fourth down. Well, you see Central Michigan doesn't want to make any mistakes with, with the ball backed up and with Pendleton's decision to field it. They really never had a chance. And the Toledo, they're, they're right at the point of attack. I, I, I can see that gap integrity. Those linebackers flying around. That's another good stop for Jones and those, those backers. Back. They run a 4-2-5. Uh, so, so their fifth defensive back is really like an outside linebacker, a space player. Some people call it a Viper or a nickel. But that was a great stop for Toledo. Ronnie Blackman is back deep. Remember, this kick is against that stiff wind. He got it uh, up in the air with some good hang time. And it'll be down to near the 45-yard line. So the Rockets will take over in central territory. We'll take a timeout. More first quarter action coming up. Well, the Toledo Spirit Squad enjoying the unseasonably warm weather. 57 degrees at kickoff. And so the Rockets will take over here. And the field flipping a little bit here. Going back to that uh, maybe ill-advised punt return by Pempleton, non-return. And now they start out at the Chippewas 45-yard line. And we saw there how all three phases of the game are tied together. When you make a mistake on special teams, backed up the offense, they really couldn't get into a rhythm, wound up for great field position for the Rockets. So here come the Rockets now trying to tie the game. Bryant Kobach straight ahead running. Nothing fancy there, but he peels off five. Bryant Kobach, the ball carrier. Bryant Kobach is a guy that got high praise from Jason Candle, the head coach of the Rockets, saying, look, here's a kid who started at the SEC level in Kentucky, ended up transferring. We see him carry it again and gets tripped up. Nicely done by the Chippewas to limit that game. But so this guy came in. He's a rocket through and through. He has proved from day one that he wants to be here at UD, not flaunting his uh, background with Kentucky. Yeah, exactly right. And, and, and that doesn't always work out that way where some of the Power Five guys are transferred down, if you will, to the group of five. But he came in with the right mentality, attitude, and effort, was a leader. Has been a leader since he's been in that locker room, and, and that's why Coach Candle has those high praises. All right, Bradley has him at third and five on the Chippewa 40. Central Michigan, the early lead. First quarter action, low snap. Bradley fires. It's caught. Good for first down yardage at the 30-yard line. Hauled in by Danzel McKinley-Lewis. Six catches a week ago, now 20 on the year. For the senior out of Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's a good slant route. Easy throw for the quarterback. He lined up wide and off man coverage. And, and, and that was a great throw and catch. Young man had a big game last week. He was a six catch, 110 yard guy with a touchdown. True freshman Dante Kent made the stop. They'll swing it out. Pass is caught out there by Devin Maddox, our first flag of the day, as he is dragged down. Yeah, we're going to get a holding penalty on Bryce Mitchell, 80. See, when you run that bubble screen, those receivers have to read it and, and figure out where the defender's going to be. Central Michigan did a good job responding to that bubble, and it made a tough block. Now the white hat today is Greg Sujak. During the run, holding, number 80, offense, 10-yard penalty, still first down. So first down, let's take a look at our impact players on defense for the Chippewas, Marcus, including that man right there, Troy Hairston. Uh, Troy Hairston, I mean, this guy's played all over the front, former linebacker too. I mean, he's, you know, he's a 4-3 kind of guy, makes a lot of plays. And then you got Diallo, the big fella up front. Muhammad Diallo, he gets penetration. He's very disruptive, 19 tackles on the season. He, he commands a double team. And he's not, and he's a 6-4, 305-pound guy. So you're going to have to keep an eye on him in the run game too. Central's uh, defensive coordinator, uh, Rob Akey, described Diallo as explosive. Bradley, short pass, screen over the middle, caught, 30, down to the 25, out of bounds near the 20-yard line. That's Devin Maddox with the yards after catch, Marcus. 
Well, you see Carter Bradley does a great job of extending the play just with that little sidestep, and that's how you create space for your underneath routes. Devin Maddox, speedster, not very big, but he's fast out of Lakewood, Ohio. Great program, two-time state champion. This guy can fly, too. And you saw they want to get him the ball in space as much as possible. If this drive started at the 45-yard line, second down and short. There goes Kobach, hurdles a man, and ends up diving Kobach, over the 15-yard line. One of the things that makes it tough to stop Toledo, and you'll see, watch how long that handoff stays there. Number one, you don't know if Carter is going to hand it off or is going to keep it, but then in an the RPO world, they'll throw the slant off of that same look, and it, it makes it tough to stop. This will also be All right, injury on the field. They're going to take a look at an injured Chippewa. Central up 7-0. We'll pause here and be back with more after this. First quarter action, 6.37 to go in the first quarter. Central is up by a score of 7 to nothing. The injured player was Jock Bristol. He's a backup defensive lineman. And so... Taking a look at him on the sideline. Toledo knocking on the door. Down by a touchdown. Carter Bradley. A sophomore out of Jacksonville, Florida. He's number two in blue. Flanked by Kobach on his left. And we're back to action now. There's the snap back. Quick pass. That's Kobach at the 15. 10, 5. Touchdown. Touchdown! Rockets punch it in. Rockets. A little screen pass, 15 yards. Bradley to Kobach. Yeah, yeah, you'll see here. Watch Bradley sell the bubble, reverse out with a spin. Kobach did a great job of selling his his run block, like he's pass protecting. Leaks out into the flat, so you see both both defenses were fooled on the execution by the offenses on both of these touchdowns. Good job by the Rockets responding. Started with that great field position. Plucky out of nearby Oregon, Ohio, just outside Toledo. He kicks it up and through. That completes a six-play, 45-yard drive. The Rockets took advantage of the short field partner. Just keep an eye on 22, Kobach watching. Play action, but he kept it moving. All eyes were on Carter Bradley. He faked a bubble screen. Kobach was by himself. Great execution because they know when you play a lot of man defense, you get those linebackers' eyes rolling, you get linemen down the field. You see the big fella, Nick Rossi, the right tackle getting out there, lead blocking. That's an excellent. This is a different way of getting to a screen, Dave. So these offenses now are really hard to stop. They have a lot of moving parts, and, and it's really tough to focus in on one part. Rockets coming off a 41-24 win on the road at Northern Illinois. Jason Candle very happy about that. So it's not been the easiest place to play for Toledo over the years, even some of their championship caliber years. Yeah, I mean, you got to go all the way back to 2006. The last time the Rockets went down to DeKalb and won that game. So you got to tip your cap to the fighting Candles and the Rockets. Lewis and Bracey back deep. Bracey is a guy we've uh, sort of been warned he might take some snaps at QB today. And again, the wind helping to create that touchback. Rockets should come out first and ten. Chippewas defensively have been a little thin. Their total squad today numbers at about 60. And in our talk with the coaching staff, they said, you know, we've had injuries and then the COVID protocols have been a little thin. And they have found themselves plugging in guys to positions they really didn't intend to play. Yeah, I, I, I believe they have defensive linemen now flip-flopping to the offense as a reserve. So they move linebackers down to defensive end. Broken play on the handoff. Rockets in the backfield immediately. It's one of our and impact Mark guys Johnson. here. Yeah, that's Juan Johnson. Rockets. Wrapped him up. Tough guy to block, 6'3", 255. He's very quick and agile. You see he's not a, he's not a huge guy, but he's, he's athletic. And he moves well. And Toledo does a lot of stunting with their defensive line. And if he crosses your face, you won't block him. Big number 99 leads the Rockets with three sacks on the year. That one for a loss as well. And not much there, hitting the pile. 
looking at a long third down here back to the original line of scrimmage third down you'll see Toledo on the play very stout at the point of attack on the right side of their defensive line. See a bunch of guys flying to the football. They, they truly, their motto on defense is 11 and 1. They want to get 11 hats to the ball on every play. Third down here. That's Pimpleton in motion. And Brock will throw it. Little screen pass is going to go nowhere. Caught, but all the way back at the 20. That's a loss of five. Well, he hit Drayton Wall with a pass, but no room to operate. No, and that's because Daniel Bowles, you see 31 right there. Just a great tackle. And then Deontay Johnson, another of our impact players. He was the first man to the ball. Both of them, when you're two linebackers, read the screen that quick, unblocked. That speaks to the coaching and, and, and the scouting that they did all week when they saw Pimpleton run out there and circle back to the middle. Elzinga is the punter. And a fair catch called for. It'll take a nice central bounce. So they do get the Rockets back in their own territory this time after giving them a short field on the previous possession. 4.33 to go, first quarter. All tied at seven. These teams three and two. So looking for a four and two finish to this abbreviated campaign. Meanwhile, Ball State and Western Michigan played for the West Championship in a late field goal has lifted the Cardinals to a 30 to 27 victory over the Broncos and Ball State will meet Buffalo in the MAC championship game next Friday. Those standings that we put up at the beginning of the show there's a lot of action in the West and you just never know week to week anybody can beat anybody very competitive. I like the East too but Buffalo really dominated over there but Ball State they really turned it on in the last few weeks and in the fourth quarter today 17 unanswered points. A pass intended for Kobach is off the mark. That's the second time we've seen that the same exact play and the ball placement not in front of Kobach. So the timing is a little off of Carter Bradley on that play action pass. That is going to be an entertaining championship game, Marcus. Anytime you have Jarrett Patterson mm -hmm. in a game, anything can happen. The star for the Buffalo Bulls. We, and we saw his record day eight touchdowns. few weeks ago. And it was just. Is that even possible? <laughs> that's what I was thinking, too. <laughs> Second down and 10 after the incompleted pass. Rockets with the ball. Tied at 7 7. Bradley. Pocket stays clean for him. And a screen over the middle. Caught. Nice yardage for the Rockets. 23 yard pickup. And that went to Jamal Turner, the tight end. That's a tight end screen. The glorified tight end screen. He came from the backside and it's 6'6, 255. You have to keep an eye on that guy, but I, I thought he moved well in space the yards after the catch. I mean, that was the most impressive part. Yeah, they haven't gone to him a lot this year, Marcus. Just his sixth catch. That one very effective. And a line drive pass. Beautiful catch on the boundary by Jawan Newton. Pass the play. That back shoulder throw in, in, in the wind. That, that was amazing right there. Bradley knew where he wanted to go the football the entire time. He threw it to the back shoulder. And Deshaun McNary, the cornerback, he didn't, he didn't have a chance to defend that ball. Newton's 13th catch of the year. None better than that one. They'll put it in the hands of Kobach and try to strip the ball from him. He held on as he crosses right, into the red zone. Here. He passed to Newton was good for 20. Rockets have peeled off about 45 yards in their last three plays. Yeah, that run almost popped out of there, but Troy Brown, eight, Troy Harrison, 13. Of our impact guys made a great, great tackle on in that play right there. 5'11", 245. He, I mean, he's a tough guy to block in space for any lineman, especially off the edge. Turner going in motion through a block there for Kobach, who ran up the middle. They opened a nice hole for him up there. Now down to the 15-yard line pickup of two. You'll see right here, that's a design inside zone, inside trap run. They're just trying to keep the defense honest. Toledo wants to get some points out of this out of this drive, but right here, third down inside the red zone. You don't want to make any mistakes, but look for them. Their screen game has been very successful. Look for some deceptive type offensive movement. Third down and five from the Chippewas 15-yard line. 
The snap back to Carter Bradley. They'll go to Kobach, room to run. Gets along the boundary to the 10, knocked out of bounds, first down yardage. As again, they use Kobach as a very viable receiving option. You see the offensive line, they all went to the chop block right away because that, that's another way of running a, run, a screen to your tailback. Great play design, good execution on third and five. Kobach will get it again, running straight ahead. Running behind the big tight end, Drew Rossi. It's inside the five-yard line, now down to the four. Big guy up front, Bryce Harris, the center, missed all of last year. Number 72 in blue. He enters that offensive line, Tyler Long on his left. They fake the jet sweep. Kobach gets it, and he is tackled Kobach, the behind the line of scrimmage. Nicely done by Troy Hairston, the defensive end. Troy did a fine job of staying at home. See, there's a technique you work it's called as a defensive end. You squat and you squeeze. If you're unblocked, you, squat means to stay where you are. If the ball is away, then you, then you squeeze down inside, and, and he was in the perfect position waiting on Kobach. 119 and counting, first quarter. Here at the sunny glass bowl on the UT campus. Bradley fires a laser to the back of the end zone. Incomplete, intended for Isaiah Winstead. Broken up back there. Richard Bowens, number seven. That's a great job. I mean, the inside throw is what Bradley really likes, but as a defensive back, if you can play the receiver's hands and his eyes, then you always have a chance to knock the football out. That is for all you defensive backs at home watching, that was a great play. It's a difference between seven and three down here in, in, in this area. But that's how you keep your eyes on the football. So it forces fourth and six. They set up for the field goal. It'll be held at the 19. Pardon me, the 14, 24-yard field goal. Clucky knocks it through. He is now five of five on the season. Ten plays, 57 yards. The field goal by Clucky puts three on the board. The Rockets are on top. He just snuck it in there <laughs> off the left upright. Yeah, we don't know if the wind had anything to do with that because it, 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 curl, it curved right into the upright. Got a lucky bounce. You get a look there in the middle of your screen, kneeling down there to talk with some of his players, Jason Candle. Head coach of the Rockets. Twelfth year here at UT. Started out as an assistant coach, offensive coordinator, and he's led them to some of the best uh, seasons they've had, including that uh, 2017 MAC championship squad. Yeah, he's been around a long time. It was a pleasure talking to him this week. He loves this place, knows it inside and out, and he understands what he calls the Toledo culture. And, and so they're, they've been recruiting the right kind of guys with the right attitude on certain transfers and turning some guys away, too. So they have something special going up here in Northwest Ohio. Rockets have walked away with points on their two drives. And this one into the end zone for a touchback. Well, the calling card of the Rockets, Marcus, has been stopping the run. They're best in the MAC in terms of run defense. And boy, have they shown that today in the season finale. The only way they've given up some plays is you had to trick them, you had to fool them, but you can only do that for so long before a great defense starts making plays in the backfield and getting that penetration. Nicely done by Deswan Johnson. He's made some plays already. And he'll lead them back out. Here come the Chippewas down. I think this is Bracey lining up at a quarterback position. And he will tuck it under and run it. Darius Bracey, 5'10", 203, out of Mobile, Alabama. Coach McElwain told us that we may see four to five guys at quarterback. They've all taken reps. And just depending on the situation and the offensive package, you never know who's going to show up, which makes it tough as a defense. But it's hard to run on Toledo. But if you get a different quarterback in there and make them play honest, then saw you can get some positive yards. Second down at seven after a three-yard pickup. Brock is back in playing for the injured Daniel Richardson. Getting his opportunity at the helm of the Chippewas. 
They'll hand it to Bracey this time as a straight running back. He tries to turn the corner, cannot do it. Wrapped up by number six, Nate Bowler. When you change the strength, meaning you had two wing backs switch to the other side, that play had the potential to go for a first down, but the Rockets held their ground at the point of attack. Didn't let the ball outside the defense, but that looked like that was getting ready to go. Nate Bauer made the stop, back up Nickelback. And we are at the end of the first quarter. 10-7 Toledo. Second quarter action coming your way next. Stay with us. Along with our producer, David Ashbrock, and our great crew here at the Glass Bowl, David Wilson, Marcus Ray, back here. We head into the second quarter. This is the way the scoring started with Khalil Pempleton with a nice spiral for Kobe Lewis. A little trickeration. And then Carter Bradley comes back with a little trickeration of his own. The screen pass. Kobach for the touchdown. Kobach has had 10 touches today, accounting for 44 total yards in the game. That went off the hands of the intended target, Drayton Law. It was like uh, an old John Elway throw right there. That one uh, was coming <laughs> with a little mustard on it. Yeah, he probably should have caught that one. A lot of heat on it. Good pass break up by Justin Clark, junior out of West Bloomfield High School. Coached by the great Ron Bellamy, former Michigan guy. Fourth down and five now. The Chippewas will have to punt it away. Just three seconds into the second quarter. Sun is back out, but a blustery day today in the Glass City. Taking back at about the 17-yard line. Rockets will bring it out with Ronnie Blackman. And he is wiped out. Good pursuit by the Gunners of Central Michigan. Blackman transfer out of Colorado. Young man's a speed. Trying to hit that Virginia corner out of right. Atlanta GA. It's good special teams covered by the Chippewas and a great athlete. Yeah, that was bracing on special teams who <laughs> came down and made the stop. So he's doing it all. And so here come the Rockets again, leading it by a score of 10 7. Bradley has engineered a couple of scoring drives. This one on the ground to Micah Kelly. Their change of pace back. He is out of Pascagoula, Mississippi. See Coach Candle's resume, fifth season. Winning record, 3-1 versus Central Michigan. Four bowl games. This man's done a great job here in the Glass City. Really enjoyed hearing some of Jason Candle's perspective on this season and the way things have really been handled and what teams have been faced with incomplete pass there by the yeah, Rockets looking for the tight end on the outside Drew Rossi no game but, uh, you know Jason makes the point that you know the pandemic has taken you out of your comfort zone your routine I mean it's up to players and coaches fans broadcasters to sort of adapt to sort of the unclear world that we're in right now yeah and, and he had a great attitude and he spoke to us fresh off the practice field and he's very candid and very open about the situation third down and 10 for the Rockets this is a big play defensively for Central Michigan Bradley loads up fires it into triple coverage again looking for Rossi and it is broken up incomplete Willie Reed there defensively among others for Central yeah he's he was Willie Reed's playing that free safety position in a quarters technique. I mean, he had one-fourth of the field. That means he was the deep guy near the hash. He did a fine job of reading his keys, breaking on the ball, and avoiding pass interference. And this young man, Pimpleton, needs to field the ball and protect this offense. But if he does catch it, he has an opportunity to give his offense a pretty good field position as well. Well, Bailey Flint is going to kick to Khalil Pimpleton, and this one is in to the teeth of that wind, and so Pempleton is standing right at midfield. You see him right there, number 88. He just stuck his finger up to test the wind, but he's got gloves on. I don't know <laughs> if that's going to work, but he's testing it nonetheless. Bailey Flint, good snap, and a shank off the side of his foot. 
And it's down near the 42-yard line. And so now the Chippewas have a chance at a short field. We'll see what they can do with this opportunity. Down by three. We'll be back. And seven Rockets. Final day of the MAC regular season. Both these teams three and two. Get a look at Jim McElwain building a Central Michigan program. One and 11. We took over. Turned it around last year. Eight and six, a bowl game. That was his career record. He's been at uh, some of the upper echelons of coaching, Marcus. Yeah, he did a fine job down in Florida. Spent a year over at Michigan with uh, Jim Harbaugh. And then, you know, he's a head coach, so he wanted to get back into it. Done a fine job in Mount Pleasant. All right, Brock back to throw. Chased out of the pocket. And finally got rid of a big hit and at the last second. Finally found his uh, sort of the release valve receiver. That was the tight end, Hunter Butchkowski. Butch Butchkowski took a licking from... Daniel Bolton, watch 31. Ooh, right there. Like to see him wrap up. He was running full speed. Had a flag on the play, but that was a and an elder man downfield. Sometimes that happens though, Dave, whenever the quarterback gets to scrambling around those linemen are downfield looking for people to block. So they'll mark this one off. We'll get the call from Greg Sujak. An eligible man downfield, number 66 offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. By the way, our replay official today is Jay Lyons. He is working in the booth. Jay stopped by earlier today. Took the time to chat and answer any questions we had. And nice, uh, nice man. Appreciated chatting with Jay. Haven't uh, needed to go to the video yet, but I'm sure we will before this is over. I went down to their booth too, man. Talked to Ed and those guys too, man. They, they looked out for me today, Dave. It was good. <laughs> yeah, they took care of you, partner. <laughs> First and 15. Lining up Pimpleton at quarterback, but Toledo didn't like it. They're going to take a timeout. Charge timeout. So we'll Toledo. take a timeout as They're well. 13.52 to go, second quarter. 10-7 Toledo, final day of the MAC regular season. There's the beautiful glass bowl, home of the Rockets. We thank all the folks for their hospitality today for our ESPN broadcast. 10-7, Rockets leading it. Central ball right now. Looks like it's Bracey again at quarterback. Marcus, the first Central Michigan drive, they marched 75 yards, punched it in for a TD. Last three drives combined, nine yards. Oh, wow, that's, that's what you got to remember. They're going against the number one defense in this league, but game planning on that first drive gave them an opportunity to score. Pimpleton was the man in motion. Bracey keeps it, so the Rockets weren't buying it. And they stuffed the box there, knocked Bracey down after a very short game. Second down and 14. So you see Bracey as the Wildcat quarterback. Probably could have took that outside following his, his lead blocker around the left side, but it's, it's always a tough read whenever you're running that Wildcat. Bracey. This time will hand it to Pimpleton. He'll throw it. Man open downfield. It's caught. I think that's Brock, the quarterback. Ty Brock <laughs> runs the wide receiver route. Pimpleton hits him with the pass. They're going deep in the playbook now, partner. Oh, a little razzle-dazzle here. And no one, I don't think anyone in the glass bowl would think Brock would run a, a go route and they would actually throw it to him. And that's the beauty of coaching and playing the game. You got to respect everybody. But at 6'4", he caught that football in front of him, gave this offense a spark. Yeah, a little fingertip catch. Pimbleton again laying that ball out there, former high school quarterback. 32 yard pickup. First down for the Chippewas, down by three. They're in the red zone now. It's Kobe Lewis picking his way forward. He picked up some nice yardage on first down. Flag down on the play. We'll see if it's coming back. Good job at that right side, though. Big Ferris and Smith. I like how Lewis started outside. Dave, then he put his foot in the ground and got north and south. Substitution infraction. Too many men on the field at the snap. Defense. 
Five yard penalty remains first down. So attack on some. Let's watch the touchdown again. Pardon me, the completion to Brock. Brock stretching out. Nice. That's Samuel Womack, he beats the senior ball. out of Detroit. You got to pay attention and cover everybody that lines up in front of you. They can get a first down at the two yard line. Ball is on the seven. Brock to Lewis. Plowing forward. They tried to open up a hole for him. He got inside the five. Lewis Hills from the great city of Americus, Georgia. That's in South Georgia, Marcus. There's another football luminary oh, yeah. from Americus, Georgia. The great Dan Reeves. Dan Reeves. Great coach of the Denver Broncos. Broncos. Also from Americus. Broke my heart against the Browns in the 80s, man. Oh, yeah. Brock tries to keep it. Not sure what went wrong there, Marcus. What do you think? Was that a Tom busted Brock play? I, it it didn't look like a busted play. It looked like a quarterback draw by design. I think the timing may have been just a little off right there. So that's a quarterback draw. He actually yep. sold the pass. The offensive line were completely in run block mode. Yeah. This defense read it, got some penetration, and didn't work. And the one. So here we go, third down and one. Football marked at the three for the Chippewas. If they punch it in, they take the lead. And in motion is Law. Brock handing it off to Lewis. He is ripped down. Big number, 99, Deswan Johnson. Mama, there goes that man again coming off the edge. Like a monster. Watch him, 99. Wow, squat and squeeze, great tackle. Brock wasn't even sure because in that play, the quarterback is supposed to read the defensive end. If he crashes hard, you got to pull that ball. He wasn't sure. Lewis took a shot. That's a big play by the big fella. Going to be looking at about a 23-yarder for Marshall Meter, the true freshman. And there is the snap back, the kick, and plenty of distance there for Meter. He boots it through. We are tied 10-10. 10 37 to go, second quarter. Snap hold and kick all perfect and they cash in yeah the wind didn't affect that kick but it was from the other hash to as well it's a good kick by the true freshman meter to tie this ball game up you see coach McElwain telling them hey keep rolling guys fight back protect the football well there are the standings as they are right now Buffalo and Akron playing today that is the only game in the east and boy the the East Division just really decimated by postponements, cancellations due to the COVID protocols. The Western Division able to get most of the games in. In fact, all the games in, and that has uh, been certainly a, a welcome sight for the teams and the campuses in the Western Division. Yeah, and the Buffalo's up big on Akron right now as we speak. As they're near halftime, it's Ball State did a fine job, and I, I really think the game for Ball State and they beat Toledo. I really think that gave them some hope, thinking that they could possibly win the West. The Ball State Cardinals, going back just a short time to 2017, Marcus, they were 0-8 mm -hmm. in the conference and outscored by 37 points a game. So what a turnaround. They're now headed to the conference championship game next week against Buffalo. Denzel McKinley Lewis, a nice return for the Rockets. It's out to the 25 yard line. And so we are tied 10 10. A couple of teams here looking to pick up a win, Marcus. It's been an unusual season, just six games, but what do you think the difference would be going into the offseason and hopefully looking at better days to come? Four and two, a win in your final game as opposed to maybe three and three. Well, I think what it does is it boosts your morale for recruiting and going into your off-season program. Kobach circles right. This guy loves to leave his feet. He tries to jump over everybody. Hard earned six yards for Bryant Kobach. Just, just a toss sweep. You get offensive linemen out on the perimeter. It's a good read, though. You can tell that Kobach understands how to cut and read off, of the, off the blocks that he gets down the field. Very good body control in space. 
Second down and five. Carter Bradley slaps his hands, takes the snap. Good protection for him. Now he's on the run and makes for the sideline. It's into the safety of his own bench down there. Toledo in the home blue uniforms today. Central in the traveling whites. That's a good job by Bradley, not forcing the ball, understanding the situation. Make something out of nothing. Give your guys a chance. Live the, just survive the down. Survive the down. Go 32. Line up and play football. It's a great decision to not force that ball in traffic. Well, one of the things that Jason Candle went on and on at length about was Bradley's uh, performance last week. His callback is cut down in the backfield. Nicely done on the defensive coverage. Devonnie Reed coming up and run support from the defensive backfield. Let's see him right here. Make the ankle tackle. Yeah, they were in a, a, a zone blitz where you blitz five and the defensive back comes down to fill the alley, and that's just the run lane. Devonnie Reed, he, he's, he's only a junior, but his whole career he has been making those type of plays down in the box for this Chippewa defense. Getting ready for the punt by Bailey Flint into the wind. Wind has been unrelenting so far today. He'll keep it a low line drive. Pimpleton from the 31 to the outside numbers. 40, 45 and near midfield. And that is where the Chippewas will take over. Timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. All deadlocked at the glass bowl. Central Michigan and Toledo tied 10-10. Let's take a look at the backfield of the Chippewas. Marcus, Kobe Lewis pictured there on your left. Lou Nichols on the right. One and two. It's a pretty good combination. I mean, they have a balanced attack with both of those guys, and they, and they really use them the same. Both obviously can catch the football, get down the field, but I mean, when you have a one-two punch, you always got something going and brewing in that run game. Lou Nichols is a little bit heavier at 5'10", 220. Low center of gravity, and Kobe Lewis is about 10 pounds lighter at 208. Ty Brock back at quarterback. He's one of the leading receivers in the game so far. This time they'll hand it to Lou. And cannot turn the corner. He's chopped down. David Hood got in there, stopped him. We'll see this again. South Florida. Native Hood, you see him getting in there, flying around, playing with some emotion. Yeah, Deontay Johnson got in there as well. Good stop, minus one on the carry. And they'll go to Lou Nichols again, angles right. Now starting this drive, Marcus score tight 10-10. Total yards, Toledo 122, Central Michigan 121. A lot of defense. <laughs> A lot of defense here, and it's definitely different for Toledo's offense. I mean, they really lit it up. And then, obviously, Central Michigan uh, didn't fare so well against Ball State. But every week's a new week, and it's all about matchups when it comes to college football. Central Michigan averaging 432 yards a game. Third down and seven, passing down Brock. Has some good protection. Downfield it goes, and overshot Pimpleton. That time Toledo did a good job running a stunt on the defense, on the defensive line, and I really think it confused Ty Brock. He didn't really know where to go with the football. And see, 91, Jamal Hines, a junior defensive end, he went from his defensive end position to a quarterback spy look. So you can, you can confuse quarterbacks and, and protection schemes in multiple ways. Luke Elzinga standing back uh, near his own 40. Will punt this one away. And he got a good leg into it. Good HT. And this one is going to go into the end zone. Boy, they nearly had an opportunity. But he took that uh, quick bounce into the end zone. Touchback. And we'll be back with more. 7.27 to go. Second quarter in Toledo. Ten ten. There you see Carter Bradley. Taking over as quarterback of the Rockets last week in a win against Northern Illinois. And here in the season finale on this December 12th. Even Steven, 10-10 your score. No 
we'll see what the Rockets have up their sleeve. Now, Marcus, they have uh, done well on first down today, averaging seven yards on their first down plays. Both coaches telling us during the week, boy, we've got to win on first down. Stay away from those big third down challenges. Nice move on the outside, drug down across the boundary. I think we're going to get a horse collar tackle there. Micah Kelly was the ball carrier, and he was ripped down from behind. That was a great run. I like the play design and, and the way they blocked it to begin with. But to put him on skates right there, like in space, that was a great run by Michael Kelly. Personal foul. First collar tackle. Number 25. Defense. 15 yard. Deshaun McNary. First and 10. Guilty of the infraction, the cornerback. We'll see it again right here. So you got a good block, though, from the backside. But right here, McNary, he let the ball outside the defense because he stopped his feet in space. Michael Kelly put a good move on him and tried to turn that corner. You just, you just can't grab the back of the, of the neck and, and, and the uniform. You got to try to grab some cloth below the shoulders. And move that all the way out to the 47-yard line. So Bradley again. Shotgun formation. He'll run it. They pump faked into the middle, and Bradley with big running room to the outside all the way into Central Michigan territory near the 33-yard line. My goodness. That was a great, great play call here. Watch how Bradley reads. He sees the edge pressure coming by Devonnie Reed. Somebody has to account for the quarterback. If Reed is going to b crash down behind the line of scrimmage and take the dive, this is triple option football now, Dave. If he takes the dive, someone has to take the quarterback. And right there, Central Michigan didn't execute, and that was a good play call by the Rockets. And they bit on the fake, and so did I. First and 10 from the 33-yard line. From the 47 all the way to the 33. Now Bradley again fakes the handoff. He'll go up top. That one is short. It's intercepted. Richard Bowens holds it in. Bowens' is first INT of the year. And he was just playing center field there at the end, Marcus. Yeah, and, and I believe Carter Bradley misread the coverage. I mean, post corner, that seven route right there is a big red zone caliber route. But, but, it, but they were in bracket coverage. And Bowens did a fine job of staying... Of, of, of staying on outside leverage, and you'll see Bradley, he's looking for a penalty. It was a lot of miscommunication, so the throw was late. Coverage, I think they confused them on that one right there. They had an inside-outside bracket on that particular route. Richard Bowens, Orchard Lake St. Mary's product. Great program in Southeast Michigan, but that was a great play, and one of the few mistakes you'll see Bradley make. First down and 10 now. Ball on the seven. So deep in their own territory. Wildcat snap to Lewis. And he goes laterally down the line and gets tripped up at about the seven yard line, line of scrimmage. Central Michigan comes into this game, Marcus, 17th in the nation in rushing yards per game, 222. They've been held to just about 40 today. Yeah, one of the reasons right there is big. Jamal Hines, 91. We just had the camera on him, 6'3", 250. Great athlete, coming from a great program down at Princeton in Cincinnati. Made that stop. Brock hands the ball off to Lewis again, running the same path there down the line to the right. And then again, they string it out. Nice job by the Rockets, third down and nine. And one of the things, too, Dave, whenever you run the Wildcat, and we heard this uh, definitely from Coach McElwain, is, Defenses will stack the box on you because it's a it's a run look. It's a it's a hundred percent run look. You can sneak in some pass in there, but they stack the box and it really gets hard to to block everybody. Brock takes the snap, hands it to Lewis, and a knifing tackle coming in there. Saeed Holt, the free safety. And again, you see all these Rockets coming up and run support from the defensive backfield, Marcus. That was a nice tackle. Yeah, they're reading their keys, and and when you and but now he lined up about eight yards over the ball, so he was a he was a run defender, a glorified linebacker, and and they figured that C Central Michigan wasn't really going to try to pass the ball down in this area. We saw him 
run the ball three straight times earlier in the first quarter when they were had the backs to the wall as well. Chance to flip the field now for the Rockets. They should get some uh, good field position here. Elzinga out of his own end zone at the 48-yard line. And a very short return by Ronnie Blackman. Nicely done by the Central Michigan Chippewas. That was a great tackle by yeah. Tyrone Scott down there. That gunner, Dave, he was flying, beat his man on the outside, and probably saved his team another 10 yards. 41-yard kick, two-yard return. Central now two of eight on third down in today's ball game. We're tied at 10, four and a half minutes to go, second quarter. And so possessions changing quickly here. Even in almost every statistical category so far, including the score, 10-10. Carter Bradley hands it off. That is Micah Kelly. So a heavy dose of Bryant Kobach early. Kelly has been getting some carries. And watch 17, George Douglas. He wraps around right there, makes a good play in space. Young man out of Belleville High School is junior. That was a good read. Anytime you're a linebacker and you see an offensive lineman pull, you saw Luke Durger, 65, wrap around, and he wrapped right around with him. And Douglas got away from uh, Chris Creighton. He's out of Ypsilanti. Bradley, line drive pass over the middle. It's up for grabs. Tipped around, and it is picked off. Willie Reed. Right place, right time. I think it hit three chips. That was that RPO, and the chips were all over it. To a man, watch Carter Bradley. Now he stares down his target, but look at right there. McNary made up for the penalty he had earlier by getting his hand on the football with great outside leverage. And that's why you run to the ball, Dave. Tips and overthrows. Whenever you see interceptions, a lot of times they're because of tips and overthrows. And right there, the Chippewas rallied to the football. Short stopped it. Ball never touched the ground, had possession. It's a good play by the Chips. Great camera work, great replays. We thank our crew so much. For the uh, great work so far today. There's nothing like a turnover. You, you see the smile on that young man's face. There's nothing like a big time interception. <laughs> yeah, and they've uh, celebrated two over the this quarter. 10 10. And so now the Chippewas back on the field. They'll go to Pempleton. Steps through the line, almost got to the second level. Dragged a couple of Rockets with him. Daniel Bolden had a hold of him. Now, you can't quite stack the box against Pimpleton because he'll because he'll let it fly up out of there. And we've seen that the two biggest plays this offense has had is when he threw the ball down the field, one for a score, the other with a tight rock on the nice little razzle-dazzle. Pick up of six, second down and four. Running straight ahead, Bracey. He meets a number of Rockets, including Deontay Johnson. Jonathan Jones in there as well. Yeah, Deontay Johnson wasn't fooled by that. You'll see him from his middle linebacker position right there. He stayed home. A few other guys in there on the tackle as well, but you have to stay home. Well, a manageable third down here, Marcus. Third down and three. Ball marked off the 40. Central operating in their own territory. Pimpleton wants to throw it. Lots of protection and lots of time. Now he'll flip it away. Almost intercepted. Dangerous pass looking for the tight end. Hunter Butchkowski was kind of floating out in the flat. You're not going to get this playoff. See, this is the play that they scored on, the rollout sprint. And then that time, Pimpleton had to make a decision because no one was open. And I think the decision you make, young man, is throw it out of bounds right over his head. Toledo almost picked that ball off. Almost dropped into Deswan Johnson's bread basket, but I don't think he saw it coming until <laughs> the last second. Right. Looked like a jump shot. Fourth down and three. Here's the punt by Elzinger. It's a deep kick. All the way back to the 10-yard line. Ronnie Blackman trying to find some running room and gets wiped out at about the 19-yard line. Modest return. Nice punt by Elzinger. Two minutes, 33 seconds to go. Before halftime, coming up at halftime, we're going to discuss the college football playoff. We're going to put our heads together and see what four teams ought to be oh, yeah. in the final mix. I'm interested to see your list, man. I mean, I know who my guys are. 
I'm going to preview it. I'm not going to ruin it, but <laughs> I'm going to say that I think you have to give some credence uh -huh. and deference to teams that have been able to play 10 or 11 games. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we'll, uh, we'll check it out at halftime. 10-10 here, entertaining ball game on the final day of the MAC regular season. One that we'll never forget. Bradley steps up, hits the tight end with a pass over the 30-yard line. Should be good for a first down. Drew Rossi, what a big target out there. Holds that one in. Three catches last week. He already has a couple today. Yeah, down there from my neck of the woods in Columbus. Huh? Powell, Powell, Ohio, Olentangy Liberty High School. Great program, too. On the ground, Central able to string it out. We have not seen either team, despite the speed of some of these running backs, Mark is able to turn the corners. No, they haven't. That's because these defensive ends are too athletic. When you go talk about Troy Harrison and Tico Brown and those guys on one end, and then you know Toledo and Jamal Hines and there's, there's Juan Johnson and those guys. It's just too athletic. You're going to have to hit them north and south. Couple of Mac West rivals doing battle. Oh, get a completion there to Devin Maddox. He had a guy on his back, but still managed to control it. Short gain of about five yards. That's what's called good football. George, George Douglas had great coverage. Stayed out of pass interference. Stayed in phase. Great catch. Good tackle. Here we go. Back to Bradley. Short drop. Now has to roll out. He's running for it. He'll get to the line to gain. It is a first down at the 45-yard line. He picks up six, needed five. And the clock will stop with 108 showing on the scoreboard. Second quarter action. That's a good pass rush, but Troy Harrison let Bradley get outside of him. As a defensive end, you cannot lose contain. And if he stays there, then the ball stays inside in front and the linebackers have a chance. But Bradley made a great play getting out of bounds in the two-minute situation. Bradley again, clean pocket, fires deep downfield, far side of the field, and it is complete. Incredible catch by Bryce Mitchell. His first of the day, 13th of the year. That one right on the money from Carter Bradley. Tell you what, this is the real first true deep ball we've seen. He goes up, makes a great catch over the true freshman, Dante Kent. He was out of phase, really wasn't in position, but he could have knocked that ball away had he got his, his, his right arm up a little sooner. Now that one goes for 37, Marcus, and puts Toledo in prime position here, final half minute. Chance for the Rockets to take the lead going to the locker room. Bradley on the rollout. He'll sling it, and it is caught. Touchdown. Rockets touchdown. Trying to see if that's Winstead. It is. Isaiah Winstead, leading receiver on the Rockets. His third touchdown catch. And again, that went right through Dante Kent, who leaped up and just could not get hand on ball. That was all pass protection and, and the arm strength of Carter Bradley. I mean, that was a confident throw in a dangerous area, but he knew exactly where to place that football. Kick up and good by Clucky. Six play, 80-yard drive. Isaiah Winstead catches the line drive pass. See, he had a clear window to throw that rollout pass. And Kent easily could have picked that one off. Probably didn't even know the ball was going to come, but watch how Bradley lasers this one in there on the run, in traffic, and our impact player, Winstead, catches the ball at his highest point, stays focused, walks into the end zone. Isaiah Winstead, 12 catches against NIU. And this guy, tremendous receiving option for the Rockets. Well, you look at these guys, Marcus, and again, it's always in the back of my mind watching these games in 2020. Uh, everybody back. They're not losing the eligibility year. So you've got uh, guys that are going to be coming back, same eligibility level. Yeah. 
And it's just a, a great uh, building block this year, really, when you look at uh, all kinds of position players. Oh, definitely. And that's throughout the country. And it's, it really put a, put a monkey wrench in recruiting on the flip side because you don't have that many scholarships to offer. And then you still have guys that came in this class going to be freshmen again. Then you have a whole new crew come in. So it's, it's just going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. So 17-10 Toledo after the strike to Winstead. 27 ticks left on the clock before halftime. Entertaining ball game today. We knew it would be. Central and Toledo for a long time rivalry. It's really been a rivalry of streaks. Mm -hmm. Central won last year to snap a nine game Toledo winning streak in yeah. the series. And that's huge for Coach McElwain when you come in as a first year guy and you're trying to change the culture and restore some of that tradition. Those are the type of games and streaks you have to end to get it flipped. Here is the kick. Central might be able to have a return. Instead, they go with a fair catch. Lewis holds that one in. Toledo was able to hit a couple of big plays on that last drive, and that's something that Central is going to have to do either right now or coming out of that halftime. They need chunk plays. It's going to be hard to run the balls consistently, especially out of the Wildcat, but they're going to need to find a way that they did on that first drive, though, Dave, to get some chunk plays into some short field. Well, as uh, Jim McElwain told us, we are not a good catch-up team. Mm -hmm. Tough to dig out of holes with the way they approach things. Central Michigan ball. They will start out at the 25. Well, when you have a Khalil Pimpleton, as we've seen, it can be a little surprising to the defense what they roll out. And so you think, well, 27 seconds left, backed up on their own 25. But you never know what they're going to pull out here with this Wildcat opportunity. Right now, Brock is standing back there, though, ready to take the snap. Well, if you got three timeouts and, and see 30 seconds, maybe a couple of throws outside a screen or so, see what you can come up with. They'll hand it to Lewis. He has not been able to break one yet today. Jonathan Jones wraps him up, and that might be it. Central's going to hurry back. They're going to try to run another play. Clock hits 10 seconds. Five-yard pickup by Lewis. Second down and five. And Ty Brock. Step up in the pocket. Now he'll have to try to run for it. Look for him to hit the turf or get out of bounds. He does. That's the final play of half number one. Toledo 17, Central 10. Pretty interesting battle between two Mac West rivals on a very nice day here in Toledo. Our halftime show is just ahead. You're watching college football and action on ESPN. Seventeen ten, Toledo leading Central Michigan here at halftime at the Glass Bowl. Some big plays in the first half. Marcus setting up these uh, scores. And we'll start with uh, Central Michigan. And they go uh, with a little uh, wrinkle in the playbook. Yeah, and, and that's with that Pimpleton package as the Wildcat quarterback. Obviously, he's they put Brock out, and he made a great catch. But then here comes Carter Bradley with a big one to Bryce Mitchell to set up their last touchdown right here the very next play to Winstead. Yeah, Winstead right at the goal line, just lurking there, holds that one in. Winstead, that was his uh, third touchdown catch of the season. Halftime in Toledo. More to come after this. you here and uh, well nothing really sparks a spirited debate uh, partner like the college football playoff lineup and that is heating up again this year just like always maybe more so in the era of COVID with the disjointed schedules but thought it'd be fun for us to take a look at our okay. four picks for the college football playoffs since it's, uh, it's all about us right? Uh, they'll, right they'll listen to us so here's what I think Marcus as we take a look at my four picks Alabama number one. I think that's a consensus. Notre Dame 10-0. I think they'll be in. 
no matter what happens in the ACC championship game rematch against Clemson. And then here's my surprise pick, Buckeyes out. You'll like that as a former Michigan guy, but I think Florida is going to come in to the SEC championship game, upset Alabama, sneak into the number four spot. Yeah, you know what, Dave, that's, that's a good list. It looks more like chalk talk to me than, than it is. Uh, this isn't March Madness, this is the CFP. I'll show you my picks now. We're gonna agree with Alabama. I, I think they're clearly the top team in the country and an upset wouldn't surprise me, but the Buckeyes to me, number two in the country. I mean, 23 person, football personnel people out still beat Michigan State by 40. I think it with a full slate of 10 games, we would have saw an extremely good Buckeye team. Notre Dame, you have to tip your hat off to Brian Kelly and Clemson. They're just a staple. They're, they're just a pillar of the college football playoff. I think they can still win it with Trevor Lawrence being in there. Uh, but Florida, good sneaky pick. But I think there's some other teams that are on the bubble. What do you think? Well, there are some guys out there floating around on the periphery. A&M, Iowa State, Cincinnati, Georgia. Cincinnati, a, a team I really considered, Marcus, 8-0. They really feel they deserve a shot with the big boys. I think so, man. I mean, that conference always gets snubbed in some department. But Iowa State, head off to Matt Campbell, A&M. Look at Jimbo Fisher down there. Then you got Georgia. Uh, I'm not a big Georgia guy right now, but I think Texas A&M can duke it out with anybody. It's always a fun discussion, isn't <laughs> it, partner? Right. All right, college football playoffs coming up in just a few weeks. Hey, we'll have stats and highlights from this game between Toledo and Central Michigan when we come back in just a moment right here on ESPN. We are at halftime, 17 to 10. The Toledo Rockets leading the Central Michigan Chippewas here at the Glass Bowl. David Wilson and Marcus Ray, we welcome you back to the booth. You've heard of the ESPN Skycam coverage, right? How, oh, yeah. How cool it is. This is it. <laughs> this is a peek into our booth today. Great to have you with us for Saturday afternoon football here on ESPN. Very entertaining Mac West ball game here. We knew it would be. Both of these teams, three and two, looking to get out of the season with a win pocket their fourth win of the year before they head to the offseason. Definitely, and I really like the game plan of both offenses coming into this game to try to use some screen passes, and we're going to show you some highlights here in a second. No, neither team able to really run the ball because both defenses have really been stout, but there were some turnovers, but the big plays were key too. Yeah, defenses have really risen to the occasion today. Let's take a look at the highlights from the first half, and we'll start out with Khalil Pimpleton to yeah. Kobe Lewis. A little razzle-dazzle out of the Wildcat. And, and Pimpleton's a guy you think that'll run it. He let it go to Lewis. Meter, true freshman, getting that 10th point for them. The so then you turn it over to the Rockets, and they went early to Brian Kobach. He's shown that he can not only run it, he can catch it too. He sure can. And Toledo did a great job of dialing up a screen of their own. A little misdirection, and then here with the rollout, Really like the protection. Carter Bradley throw the risk eight, one, two. Winstead, one of our impact players, to give them that 17 10 lead. Well, let's take a look at the first half numbers here, Marcus. Uh, what jumps out the page? Obviously, uh, we've seen some pretty even Steven play. What do you think? Total yards. I mean, 100 more yards, I think, will add up to a seven point difference, even though the turnovers, you know, could be a little bit worse. Chippewas fought back. They were playing on a short field, back-to-back -back possessions with interceptions, so I think that gave them a chance to stay in it. But I think the rush yard, Central Michigan really hasn't been able to run it, but they ran it just enough to keep it close. But the ball control, they've had the ball a little bit longer, so I think that's why we have a pretty even game. All right, Marcus, let's put on your coaching hat now. If you're in both locker rooms, uh, let's start with Central. What might you be telling the Chippewas? And then let's uh, see what you think about Jason Candle and the Rockets. Well, if I'm if I'm Jim McElwain, I'm going to tell those guys, keep fighting, create another turnover. This offense is definitely going to have to come up with some big plays because that's how they got their points, execute but getting at least two, two or three more chunk plays. If you're – the Rockets and Jason Kendall, you say, hey, this defense can't give up any more points. Create some turnovers, get this offense, and Carter, a lot more opportunities on offense, and I think they're going to start taking more shots. All right, we'll see how it plays out. Seven-point difference, Toledo 17, Chippewas 10, second half action just ahead. The glass bowl, 
on the campus of the University of Toledo. David Wilson, Marcus Ray, John Moore helping us out here in the booth on stats. David Ashbrock, our producer. Here's Ty Brock, the quarterback of the Chippewas. Jason Candle, head man here at the University of Toledo. 17-10, McElwain. Hoping to see his chips come back. Toledo will have the ball to start play in the third quarter. Let's check some of the other football in the MAC today. Eastern Michigan, Marcus. <laughs> Pretty strong finish to the year. The upset of Western, and now they knock off Northern. To fighting Chris Creighton. So you see Ball State winning the West. Western Michigan, very good season as well. Buffalo doing what they do. And then the other two games didn't happen, but Maxion, man, today still has some good ball games. Buffalo has just scored. That uh, could be updated to 49 zip. You know, in those other East games that did not play, that group of four teams there, Ohio and Kent State, that would have been a very interesting matchup today, Marcus. I love what uh, Sean Lewis is doing at Kent State. Yeah, I do too. And then, you know, Frank's been there a long time at OU. They've had a different season too. But um, that East is competitive. I mean, a lot of guys, you know, get in the phone booth and rough each other up. Week to week, the Buffalo, King of the East, Ball State, all the way from Muncie, getting it done. Had to do the championship against Buffalo. That's going to be a fun game next Friday night up in Detroit. We are ready for action. And a line drive kick is going to sail right out of bounds over the left sideline. And flags fly. Try to squib kick it. Didn't want to kick it deep. Ronnie Blackman, he's been knocking on the door on a few of those returns, but gives up some pretty poor field position to start off with defensively. Free kick out of bounds. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First and 10. First and 10 at the 35 for the Toledo Rockets. Rockets a win over BG. A loss at Western, 41-38, to which was just a shocking loss in the last couple of minutes of the game the fake spike of the ball Kobach gets the call on the first play and he is driven down to the turf Reed makes the stop number five in white you'll see him come in here and snuff out this play yeah yeah Reed's been moving around looks like he's playing nickelback he's a very physical young man been watching him last couple of years out at Detroit Michigan Belleville High School Man, you see him at the top right of your screen. He plays safety, but they will move him down, and he'll blitz off that edge. The first time they, Carter Bradley kept the ball around him. That time, Reed read the play a little better. Bradley gets rid of it quickly to Kobach. Tries to turn the edge on the left. Got to the 35 original line of scrimmage before he is wiped out. It's good reaction by the Chippewa defense. They really need to get a stop like they did to start the game off of playing out. Troy Harrison, you see him flying around. George, George Douglas didn't make the tackle, but he also affected the play. And then the rest of the white shirts cleaned him up. Yeah, Harrison covered some ground that time. All the way out into the flat. Third down and 10 for the Rockets. First possession of the third quarter. Just a minute gone by. Second half. This one almost tipped and almost picked off. It was intended for Danzel McKinley Lewis. No Looks like it might have hit him right in the hands, Marcus. Let's see the replay. Oh, a little bit, little bit behind him. Yeah, a little bit behind him. You see, I told you about those tips and overthrows. Ronnie Reed almost picked that one off. That would have been huge because he got the ball at midfield instead of a punt situation. That's a good stop for the chips, though, being down one score. There is the punt. Short kick. End over end, down by the Rockets at about the 32-yard line. Well, the Chippewas defensive coordinator, Rob Akey, said, look, we've got to contain Bradley's explosive plays. They've done that today. That was a very good stand by the Chips. Definitely in the game Toledo played last week, we talked about Carter Bradley's career day. They were able to hit some big plays, and Danzel McKinley-Lewis on the outside, Isaiah Winstead had a big game. We've only seen two, like three big plays out of this Toledo offense, which is why the game is still relatively close. So. Little chips inherit the ball off the punt. They'll take over at their own 32-yard line. Man in motion is Drayton Law. Brock 
Hands it off. Carrying it, Lou Nichols breaks into the secondary. He's off to the races with a burst of speed out across the 20 to the 10 and into the end zone for a touchdown, touchdown of 68 yards. Lou Nichols. Third on the carry. I'm going to talk about great execution, good blocking, good vision. See the big fella. Pulling around, Cade Klimzak. He actually opened that up. And Lewis, Lou Nichols finally ran with the kind of patience you need for that play to go. And we talked about Central Michigan needed more big plays. Didn't have to come through the air. You get some big plays on the ground, and you get back in this ballgame. Klimzak sprung him free. He's the converted defensive lineman starting on the offensive line today. He did a fine job for him on the backside. You'll see the left guard right there pulling around. Kick out block. And then Lewis does the rest. Makes a great move in space against Sandra Womack. Nichols does the rest. Well, now tied 17-17 after the big 68-yard touchdown run by Lou Nichols. Marcus Charlie Fry, the offensive coordinator for the Chippewas, described Nichols as a one-cut downhill back. And that's what we saw right there, one cut, downhill, and he can add home run hitter on there too. He went the distance. You start making people miss in space, you read your blocks, good call against an over aggressive defense that time you get the one-on-one -on -one matchup and then it turns into seven points another short oh. bouncing kick it's up for grabs and the rockets cover it and as that bounced around off about six different guys looks like the rockets able to fall on it to save the possession that was a near disaster for the rockets yeah, that ball hit jonathan jones and it bounced off of him. That was a All great kick. Drew Rossi was able to fall on it. Mm -hmm. Hey, before that big run by Nichols, Marcus, the Chippewas had been held to 62 yards rushing. That play went for 68. Yeah. And, and that's what OC Charlie Fry told us. We, you know, they really need to run the football to even up the score and give them a chance. Kobach. Cutting through some open space, it closes quickly. It gets across the 35 to the 37. That was a good tackle by uh, Amir Sadiq from the backside. I mean, I, it looked like Brian Kovac was getting ready to pull off a of Luke Nichols and do the exact same thing in return to favor. But that backside pursuit, C-34 walking to the left of the screen. Defensive end getting to the football. And he just saved his team possibly six points. Kobach is certainly a big play capability type of runner. And now Bradley in trouble. Dives ahead, makes something out of nothing. In fact, that last dive, Marcus might have got him the first down. They'll move the sticks. Yeah, this second and third effort though by Carter Bradley. I mean, you'll see here he has a clean passing window. Nothing's there. Man covered to the back end by the Chippewas, and he was able to just get probably more than he should have on that play. But he's a tough, tough runner when he does decide to run. Carter Bradley out of Jacksonville, Florida. Kobach going nowhere. Chippewas again, good penetration in there. Expecting the run that time. Brown makes the tackle. Yeah, that's what's called shooting your gun. When you're a linebacker and you see an open gap, you don't stand there and wait for something to happen, Dave. You shoot your gun. And, and, and that's just the coaching, linebacking coaching speak that, that they use when they tell a linebacker, get downhill, get in that backfield. That's, that's what Brown did on that play. And Brown out of Flint, Michigan, makes the stop. There's a little screen pass caught by Kobach. They try to set up some blocking for him, but he cannot turn it upfield. Again, dragged down right about the line of scrimmage. Gonna head to the 46-yard line. The Rockets try to run a screen, which is a big third down call for a lot of teams offensively. Central Michigan, oh, well, second down call. But Central Michigan obviously read it. One of the issues they were having in the last couple of weeks have been missed tackles, and we haven't seen that today. And, and, and that's straight from Rob Akey's 
phone call that we have with him this week. Alonzo McCoy made the stop. Bradley drops back in the pocket. Good protection. Line drive pass. It's caught by Winstead at the 40. First down yardage for the Rockets. Now close to the 35-yard line. This is about the second or third time we've seen Carter Bradley stand in that pocket, wait for something to happen. Right there, just that little two-step forward opened up that window. The Winstead. It's a great throw and catch in a, in a very crucial situation. All tied at 17, 10.45 and counting. Third quarter here at the Glass Bowl. Lights are starting to take uh, more effect as we get into the early evening hours. Again, a run. This time by Dequan Finn, number seven, who came in and took the snap. And now Bradley will come back on. Finn, backup quarterback out of Detroit, MLK High School. Redshirt freshman. Good program out there in Detroit. Detroit Martin Luther King. A perennial, perennial powerhouse in Detroit with Cass Tech. Oh, yeah, Bell Cass Bill. Tech. They produce athletes uh, in all college sports. Back to throw. Bradley in trouble. And he'll be sacked. First sack of the day for the Central Michigan Chippewas. 34 right from the left of your screen. Good bull rush, though, by big fella Troy Harrison. But it's the second time Amir Sadiq has made a big play. I mean, he's flying around. Probably, you said the first sack of the day, right? Yeah, I mean, they haven't been able to get to Bradley, but this man's motor, his first step, the junior out of Detroit. Amir Sadiq, 6'2", 245. His first step with that club and rip. It's a good move. His first sack of the year, third down, 17. Sidearm slinging by Bradley. He goes down in a heap as he got absolutely wiped out by Robbie Stewart. Bradley limping off under his own power. The pass incomplete. Fourth down at 17 for the Rockets. And boy, maybe the most spirited defensive series for Central today. I like that word, spirited, because they played with a lot of emotion. They never backed down and wavered and just and they kept Toledo out of out of rhythm. They looked out of sync that possession. Fair catch called for and then muffed. But down on the football to save the possession. Fair catch was called for. That was Pempleton. He had to dive on it quickly. We'll take a timeout here, catch our breath. 9-13 to go, third quarter, all tied at 17. We've got a good one here in the Glass City. Central has tied it up 17-17. They'll get the ball back now. It's their defense that is keeping them in this game, Marcus. Yeah, and that young man up here, Sadiq, you see him with the pursuit tackle. Then he comes right back with a big sack that really altered the drive. The third down stop with Troy Brown in his linebacker position, playing with a lot of energy. Puts that hand up, letting everybody know it's a ball game out here in Northwest Ohio. There's Amir Sadiq, and there is Ty Brock. Brings the Chippewas back out. Both teams three and two. Regular season finale in the max schedule. Back to throw Brock off his back foot. Up for grabs. And it is incomplete. Intended for Pempleton. Broken up and almost intercepted. That was Chris McDonald on the defensive coverage. Well, a little bit of misdirection, and it's really hard to throw this ball rolling to your left. Pempleton's not the tallest guy in the room. I mean, he can get up there, but at 5'9". That's a very dangerous throw for Ty Brock. I think Central Michigan needs to establish that run after that Lou Nichols big run. Brock fakes the handoff, fires it to Pempleton, makes the catch, cradles it right above the turf. We'll see where the spot is, and they say move the sticks. Ten-yard pickup. It's good play action fake, though, by Kobe Lewis. And they really sold the run. That's why the middle of the field was wide open. Those linebackers gave, vacated the window. This time they will give it to Lewis. Sort of knifes to the left. Picks up a nice chunk of yardage on first down. Kobe Lewis, Jim McElwain, really feels he has potential at the next level. Yeah, and I do too. When you watch him, he has sweet feet, vision. You know, he's a guy that's going to test well whenever they come to the school or he goes to the combine. Brock on second and five. 
It's a little air under that one for Pempleton. He grabs it, stays in bounds. Dragged down in Toledo territory. I don't know how he held on to it. See, when you throw those kind of balls to an undersized guy, it's because he plays big. And, and, and that's a big play. Watch this play. So off the play action here will drop back pass. But Pimpleton runs a wheel route. He runs outside, basically an out and up. Saeed Holt lost track of him. And that was almost another six points. But those are the type of plays Central Michigan needs. 29-yard pickup. And now Brock still trying to make a play. Ends up getting knocked down. Incomplete pass. And Charlie Fry would like to see him just... Uh, Unload that one out of bounds. You just go ahead and flick that one out of bounds. Look like there's a Rockets Time player down. Player Maybe Jamal Hines, 91. Yeah, over on the sideline, there was a big collision there. So we'll check all that out. I'm not sure if that might have been a support person or a coach over there who might have been in the way of all that. But uh, now I, I believe you're right, Marcus. We'll, we'll see. Now, but it is a Toledo player, so you're right. I believe it might be Jamal Hines. 17 all here, third quarter. Big fella got the win knocked out of him a little bit, but he's yeah. good to see him walking off on his own accord. We want to talk about a kid that comes from a great program, Cincinnati Princeton, Ohio. Great players going all the way back to former Michigan quarterback Mike Taylor. Got guys at Ohio State, I mean, all over the country. And you want some good football, you're going to go to Cincinnati, Princeton, and Toledo got one right there in that young man. He's a junior. His career high in tackles is 11, and that was uh, against Ball State earlier this year. So saved his best for the best. Ball State won the West today with a come-from-behind win over Western Michigan. 17 unanswered points in the fourth quarter. Well, they are celebrating in Muncie. Nichols had the big touchdown run earlier. He's going to drive the pile. Still going before they finally get him down to the turf. Tyson Anderson helped get him stopped finally. Well, for Nichols, just another uh, day at the office. Well, one of the things is they're able to get north and south in between the tackles. And the left side of that line over there, Powell Woods, Raymond, those guys are winning at the point of attack and recreating the line of scrimmage in the run game. Brock, he's getting chased. Still on his feet, though. Got rid of him. The pass is caught by the tight end. That's Hunter Butchkowski. It's over the boundary. And they ran a long way to get about five yards, but Butchkowski catches the pass at the last possible second. I think... I think Brock could have threw the ball to Butchkowski a lot sooner. Like, as soon as he ran the fake, took your two steps on the boot read, because he was open the entire time. But he stayed alive. He looked down the field trying to go through his progressions, and then Butchkowski was his outlet. And those guys were fortunate to get five yards on that play. Caleb Sutherland got him out of bounds. Second down and five from the 29-yard line, just outside the red zone. Brock in trouble again. He's going to go down. Anderson with the sack. Tyson Anderson. Anderson. He was another guy that Tyson Anderson was a guy that easily could have been on that impact player list. He's athletic, long, 6'2", 205, blitzing off the edge. Look at his stride. I mean, he's covering a lot of ground with not a lot of stride. That's a big-time play. And Ty Brock saw him coming, too. 6'18 to go. You can sort of feel the momentum shifting over to Central Michigan there. Marcus running the ball effectively, but... Well, back to back, uh, big place by the Toledo defense. Third down and 11. Wildcat formation. Pimpleton in. He has it, fires it, little short. Time he was looking for Oakley Lavalle. Back up tight end in there. Hey, when, you, when, you, when you look at that play, it never really had a chance from the beginning. But I think it's a safe call because now you, if you want to give the defense a chance to you know, have good field position. Now, if they're kicking a field goal here, obviously they're trying to get points, but if you kick a field goal or a punt, at least, at least it's still not bad field position. You get something out of the drive. Well, the career long for Meter is 51. 
This will be a 53-yard attempt. Snap and hold look good. Kick on the way. And it is good from 53. Oh, wow. New career long. Had that wind behind his back. That was a great call. Look at Coach McElroy. <laughs> That's a great call. 20 to 17. We'll see the kick going to break. They split it right down the middle. Marshall Meter, true freshman out of Eaton Rapids, Michigan. Toledo ball. We return in just a moment. Twenty seventeen Central Michigan takes the lead on a fifty three yard field goal by Marshall Meter. We'll revisit that in just a moment. But Central Michigan putting a ten play fifty two yard drive together. Took three minutes and twenty four seconds of clock time, and they jump on top by three. And so the Rockets preparing to get the ball back. And it's that uh, short kick. They are not giving any chance for Denzel McKinley Lewis or Ronnie Blackman to run it back. But Marshall Meter, Marcus, look at this. Look at that. Career high. Got the wind behind his back. Plenty of distance. Good celebration, man, for the true freshman. How about the guy behind the uh, end zone with the one-handed catch? But here's Jim McElwain. Yep. Just a uh, 53-yard field goal. We got it. <laughs> He stays cool, calm, and collected, man. He, he, you know, he's been around a long time. Probably didn't even agree with the call. Like, I think we should punt it. And he looked up, said, oh, I think he can hit it, coach. We got the win. <laughs> Hopefully get a chance to see that again later. The, the guy catching it behind the end zone. Just a one-handed grab. All right, here come the Rockets now. They'll try to answer. Bradley goes up top for Winstead, and it is intercepted. Deshaun McNary. Makes the INT. Central takes over again. Rob Akey told us this week, I'm looking for McNary to have a big day. Well, he just delivered. Well, that's the third interception today. And this defensive backfield has done a great job in coverage. Minus a few plays. Right there, that ball was underthrown. You have to throw that high and outside. If it ends up inside, then it's going to be a turnover. So, so Bradley, you know, maybe the wind has something to do with that, too, because that ball was thrown against the wind. If you look at the flags, we just saw a 53-yard field goal, but that ball sailed on Carter Bradley that time. So interesting play call. They went for the big ball, the home run. It backfires. Central takes over. 5.39 to go. Still a long way. We're in the third quarter. Quite a battle here today between Central Michigan and Toledo. A blustery day. It has been dry throughout. We had some rain early today in the Toledo area, but nothing during the game. Brock to Butchkowski out ahead of the defense. First down and more. I think the pump fake there. Nice little trickeration. Watch Ty Brock with the pump fake right there. Throws, freezes the defense, opens up the wheel route for the fullback Butchkowski for another big play. Central Michigan starting to find the rhythm offensively. And Butchkowski has been a factor here in this second half. That's a 25-yard pickup. Now Nichols. He gets folded up back at the 43-yard line. Not much there. Second down and eight now. Central Michigan has the momentum, and I, and I really think here they have to keep this Toledo defense off, off balance. Little run here, little pass there, sprinkle in the screen game. Go back to your Wildcat. Brock sends Pimpleton in motion. They'll hand it to Lewis. He'll try and turn the corner. This may be the first big yardage of the day on that play. He gets the Kobe first Lewis down the and out of bounds, running to the right side That's of the field. Kobe Lewis, Lewis, the junior, out of America's Georgia, turned on the Jets. Well, he got some good blocking on that outside stretch play right there. And you saw the speed by Kobe Lewis to be able to turn that corner. But he get picked up some fine blocking. That was a big run, though, on second down like that, to be able to hit that against this athletic front of Toledo. They're in Toledo territory now at the 35-yard line. Ty Brock angles left, fires a pass. It's caught by Lewis out of the backfield. He's dragged down at about the 31-yard line. Nate Bauer tackled him. 
In a four, second and six. See, that play action, and, and that, it freezes the defense whenever the quarterback looks one way and it's really a screen play the other, and that's a good play call coming behind the line of scrimmage. Brack, uh, Brock is pretty adept at those looks. Downfield, incomplete. Looking downfield for a receiver. That was uh, off the fingertips. Just off the fingertips, though, there was another big play. Actually good coverage, though. I mean, that's a tough tough route to defend for Justin Clark to the fine job, 24. Yeah, Adam Jones was the intended target. First time he has been targeted today. Lewis in the backfield. Pimpleton goes in motion. Two of ten on third down today for the chips. Brock will tuck it under his left elbow. Dives forward. Short of the first down. Fourth down. Going to be a long three here, Marcus. I think, I, I think it's four down territory, but while you have the win, why not use it? Man just knocked in a 53-yarder meter. Football's resting at the 29. So looking at about a 46-yarder here. Need to attempt the field goal. A 47-yard attempt. So 47 officially, 3-10 and counting third quarter. Holder is Mark Petrito. Low snap. Petrito gets it set up. Kick on the way, and he nailed it again. Knocked in another one from deep. We give a lot of credit to Mark Petrito, the holder there. I think we'll see it on the replay. He got it set up for meter. Right on cue. Meter knocks it through to make it 23-17. Now you go back to the 53-yarder. You know, Meter's impressive enough, but look at the ball guy. Definitely. I mean, one handed catch one, at the knees. I mean, this guy's one handed and <laughs> kicks <laughs> the ball. There he is. <laughs> Possibly needs to be recruited. Yeah. I mean, he's a sure handed, sure handed guy right there. I mean, that little. One hand action going on on the game. <laughs> All right, back to back field goals by the Chippewas. They walk away with points. They're up six, 3.02 to go. They have really been the aggressors, Marcus, both offensively and defensively in the second half. Definitely. And, and I think they came out and they showed you that in the first series on defense, forcing a three and out. Here's a chance for a return by McKinley Lewis, but with the bouncing ball down there, the Gunners had a chance to really cover it. And he could not effect much of a return. El Zinga doing a nice job with those uh, bouncing kicks. So Central Michigan pins them back in their own territory, and the Rockets will try and answer here. Offside, number 37, kicking team. Five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First and 10. Greg Sujak makes the call there in the offside on the, the kicking team, for the, the Chips. So to start off first and 10 at the 30, the Rockets had a 17 to 10 lead at halftime. So here we go, Carter Bradley. It's the tight end, Rossi in motion. And handing up between the tackles, Micah not Kelly much there for here. Micah Kelly. Kelly got thrown down to the turf. Big Willie used to be a running back. Last year he was he was in that ro he was in that rotation, but with injuries and things going on, you moving guys around. Now he's playing on that D line and he's actually pretty tough to block. It's a big, big tackle by Willie right there. Kumanuga Willie. It's out of uh, Shelby Township, Michigan kid. On the ground again. And again, feeding Kelly. Modest gain. Third down and seven. The legal offense on third down this year. Marcus 48.5%. They have not fared as well today. A lot of that credit goes to Central Michigan. Just being able to move around and make plays on the ball from pass breakups to interceptions. 
Central now over 308 yards in total offense and a near sack. Bradley got away the throw to avoid the sack, but he was absolutely wiped out in the backfield. Well, Toledo's having a tough time blocking Central Michigan. I mean, I mean let, let's face it, they're actually losing this ball game up front. I look from the left side. See Troy Brown blitzing from his linebacker position. When you, when, when you get two, three guys in the quarterback space, that's either scheme as far as the stunts that you're running, or they're, you're just beating people one on one. You know, Central Michigan came into this game, Marcus, last in pass defense. Mm -hmm. And Rob Akey told us, look, you know, our, our defensive secondary, they, they kind of take the bad rap on that, but you Touch have to play down. well up Number front two. defensively. He pointed out that. Ball will be placed next spot of the foul. Loss of down, fourth down. That was a late grounding call. So you got the call there from Greg Sujak, but he makes the point that a lot of people I don't think about, uh, uh, people don't realize is that your up front defensive linemen have to match the pass coverage. You oh, you're exactly right. always hang it on the DBs. Oh, yeah, and, and, and the way, you know, he really meant it is like the front and the coverage have to be married. I mean, they have to go together whether you're running man blitzes or zone blitzes. What you're doing up front better be married to what you're doing on the back end or it's going to be a long day. Fair catch on a great punt by Bailey Flint. Fair catch by Pimpleton at about the 35-yard line. That's where the Chippewas will come back out. So 23-17, the leg of Marshall Meter has been the deciding factor here in the third quarter. Central Michigan has walked away with points on all three of their drives in the second half so far. We're 134 to go now in the third quarter. Well, they've definitely got all the momentum and it's starting with their defense. Now their offense is moving the ball and, and, and they're getting points. They're not getting seven, so it's still a one-score lead. Line drive pass complete to the left boundary to Ja'Cory Sullivan. Sullivan, they're starting wide out. He's out of Muskegon. First team All-Mac performer a year ago. Yeah, he's a sure-handed guy. You can trust him in the pass game for sure. And I know it's been kind of tough getting him the ball recently, but... This offense has, has so many different moving parts going on from the run and the pass game. This is the handoff. This is Lewis, and he is ridden out of bounds after a short game. Holt came in, made the stop. And at this point, really, for Central Michigan, he's saying, keep doing what you're doing. Mix in the run and the pass. You saw a pass on first down, then you come back with the outside zone run right there. Lewis picks up the first down. It's all about third down for these guys. They were at 30% coming into the game. Brock wants to throw it, looking for Pimpleton down there. He is open for a moment, leaps up, and gets hit as the ball arrives. Nicely done. Quick Brock's double coverage by the Rockets. Tyson Anderson getting some late help. We'll see it again right here, Marcus. Nate Bauer arrives as well. And, and you see the pressure caused Brock to, to actually stop his path and try to throw it off his back foot. Dangerous throw. Pimbleton still almost came up with it. It's good defense on the back end. Little draw play to Lewis. And again, the Rockets flying to the football anytime it's between the tackles. Well, there's a pattern being formed. Central Michigan pass on first down, run on second, figure it out on third down, and I think Toledo's starting to sniff that out just a little bit. And, and, and if I'm Central Michigan, and I either mix in a screen in there or do something different next go around. Not sure if the chips will get a playoff here. They say no. They tried to snap it right at the one second mark. The officials say that's the end of the that's third the quarter. Third quarter. 23-17, two Marshall Meeler field goals have put the Chippewas in front. The all-important fourth quarter is coming up. Well, we are seeing a different Central Michigan team in the second half. And we saw in the first, they have stormed ahead. You see 13 points in the third quarter. 
And they have really done it on the ground, Marcus. Yeah, they really have, but they've mixed in just enough pass to keep the defense honest. Look at the third quarter rushing yard, 99 to minus 10 yards in favor of Central Michigan. And, and when we talked about them making some plays coming out the locker room, they've been able to do it. Well, a near disaster there as Brock fired a ill-advised pass. It was knocked down, nearly intercepted. Little zone blitz action. Looks like Terrence Saylor, defensive end, was responsible for the short and outside zone called the flats. And uh, Ty Brock didn't see him in coverage. Could have been a costly turnover. Nevertheless, he dodged a bullet. Now they can still flip the field. Back to return, that's Ronnie Blackman. Punt coming up on fourth and five. Here's Elzinga, he's been busy and very effective today. Angles that off and they'll be able to pin him back deep. Nicely done. Now there's a flag, we'll see if it's coming back. 23-17, central by six. I think we're gonna get a hold here, Marcus, what do you think? Yeah, that's that all in indication probably says that. Beautiful kick by Elzinga. Let's hear from Greg Sujak. Holding. Number 56, return team. Half the distance to the goal. First and 10. So the problem's mounting for the Rockets. They'll mark it back halfway. Here's some INTs. Nice work by the Chippewas in the defensive backfield. Yeah, they're running some combo coverages, but they're racking in these receivers, but most importantly, they're getting their hands on the ball. As you see the tip right there, and Reed comes up with the interception, and Bradley here throws one against the wind, underthrown, inside, short, turnover every time. McNary doing his best Marcus Ray impersonation right there. <laughs> He probably looked more athletic than I was, partner. <laughs> All right, we are underway fourth quarter, and the Rockets are their backs to the wall right now. Football resting at the two-yard line. And Kobach runs straight up the middle. Gets him some room to breathe. And he just put his head down, burst of speed right there, Marcus. Did you see that from the time he, right here, watch between, he gets through the line right there, gets the foot in the ground. He was downhill in a hurry, and he's punishing guys, too. Nice hole opened up by Tyler Long, the right guard. And they hand it to these offensive lines today. Back to throw. Bradley wants to go to Kobach out of the backfield just off his fingertips. That's the third time they haven't been able to connect on that play action out of the backfield. But Kobach, it, it, it's there. I mean, his track. Out of the backfield, too wide for George Douglas, who's responsible for covering him. That's a great path course he took, but they just couldn't connect. 15 carries today, 36 yards, has also caught four balls. Second down at 10. Ball on the 13 yard line. Bradley on the rollout. Nice throw, nice catch. Isaiah Winstead at the 22. There you go, play action, spin out. That, that, that reverse out a lot of times freezes the defense. And, and if you're in zone coverage reading the quarterback and you think he's looking the other way, that receiver, his timing, he's still running routes based on certain steps. And when he breaks you off, there's no way to defend it. If you missed the early part of our show, both quarterbacks in this game, not starters at the beginning of the year. Number two on the depth chart, but running the show today. Kobach gets him the first down. Needed one, got about seven. And he's out to the 28-yard line. This drive started at the two. Well, this run is designed to go to the left the entire time. And you see that jump cut on the inside. Gets those linebackers going the wrong way. Oh, there's a save. Kobach along the sideline, outside the numbers, across midfield. Late hit coming up. Ill-advised late push by Willie Reed. Yeah, Willie Reed didn't like that shot to the face, that stiff arm, though, and it carried that, that, that bad energy out of bounds with him. They'll talk over the penalty. We'll see the play again in a moment. Bryant Kobach turned the corner and had wide open green in front of him. 
after the runner had gone out of bounds. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number two on the defense. The 15-yard country will be added to the end of the run. First and 10. It's right here is actually a good, good play right there. That stiff arm right there plays over. That right there, seven, eight yards out of bounds. You just got to take that stiff arm and like it, or just go ahead and tackle a man by his After legs. You don't have to worry about that, but you got to keep your composure, though. It's a heads-up move, though, by uh, Kobach. So this moves the ball ahead to the Chippewas' 33-yard line. Bradley puts it in the hands of Kelly. And a straight-ahead running. And a yard, maybe. Maybe just back to the line of scrimmage. Bryant Kobach, by the way, has now broken into the top 10 all time in rushing at UT. So congratulations to Bryant Kobach. Congratulations to that young man. A lot of great ones played here. He'll be back two more years potentially. Bradley with Kelly blocking for him. Clean pocket. Now it starts to break down and he'll go down. Sacked by George Douglas. George Douglas, young man out of Belleville High School. I know Coach Perwell likes that play, but here's that's a delayed blitz. The problem with, with, with this play is they ran all deep routes. There was no check down for Carter Bradley. There was no underneath outlet dump off pass, and then it became a delayed blitz. He had to hold the football, and he wasn't going to outrun. Young man right there, 6'1", 222. Big time play, George Douglas. Third and 17 after the loss. Football marked at the 40. Bradley narrowly got away. Now trying to run it. Back maybe to the 36. Ball came loose. And then they pounced on it. I think that was Luke Durger who covered the football for the Rockets. Very fortunate to get that back. I mean, play was well defended. Right there, Troy Harrison had a chance to make a play. And if you're Carter Bradley... You just maybe slide in that situation. You don't want to take no shot, but that ball comes out. But that's why whether you're on offense or defense, Dave, you always run to the football. Good things happen when you run to the ball. You might recover your quarterback's fumble. The ruling on the field is that the runner fumbled before he was down. It was recovered by the defense, first and ten. Well, the chips recover it. We saw Durger jumping on it, and then it might have squirted free. Obviously it did. Let's see if we can pick it up. The Carter's got to get two hands on that football in traffic. You know, spin where we try to spin out of it. You know, he's, he's clock that operator, please down. reset the game clock to 11:45. Thank you. I don't know. I think Durger might have had it right there. I thought Durger had it though the whole time. I, and I think somebody snatched the ball up out of there. A lot of things happen under that pile, right? Yeah. A lot of things. I'm talking about your calves get pinched, get your eyes gouged out sometimes, and sometimes you might sn snatch a football between someone's ankles. Pass incomplete. Looking for Ja'Cory Sullivan on first down, so a big break there. Toledo had marched into Central Michigan territory. They had taken advantage of the late hit. Second and ten. But then they give it up on the fumble. Chips have the lead and the ball, 11-42. Well, do you keep your foot on the gas here, or do you start trying to use some clock? No, you, you just got to run your offense and do what you've been doing. And run the football, definitely, for sure. Well, Lewis does just that. He runs hard, close to the 40. Because here's the deal, Dave. It's only a one-score game. You know, it's, it's not a situation where you still want to play away from disaster on the side of the ball. So you have to play and still be aggressive and smart. Yeah, and already third down. So a big third and five play for Central Michigan. 11-14 and counting. Boy, what a fun game we have here today in the MAC regular season finale. Two teams, three and two. Lewis to the outside, turns the corner, first down. Knocked out of bounds at midfield. Lewis, the ball carrier. So they chased him out, but not before he got first down yardage. See, the beauty of this play is that it starts to the right, which causes the defensive end to crash inside. And when you bounce it, there's no edge defender. And, and, and that's by scheme. Sometimes it's a breakdown on the defense. Terrence Taylor made a good play running to the ball. But, player on the defense. but when you start that inside and you go outside, good things happen. 
Well, we have exactly 11 now minutes left. Timeout. timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. Central by six. Well, one of the busiest guys at the Glass Bowl today has been uh, that man, number 88, Khalil Pempleton. Mr. Everything. I mean, Mr. Do It All. Plays good. You see, got the first touchdown pass here. Trick, trick play. Off the wide receiver, halfback pass. Right on the money. And then he comes back here. Makes a great catch in traffic. Stays in bounds. Tried to break another tackle and go to the house. I'm talking about a guy that can run, pass, and catch. You've just seen it. He's the guy you list on the roster as the ATH yeah. athlete. Athlete. Mr. Yeah, he's very versatile. Little reverse. Carrying on the jet sweep to the near side, and it does not go upfield. So new wrinkle there to Pimpleton on the reverse, but he just couldn't turn the corner. And again, the Rockets have been doing that well today, stringing it out. Yeah, and, and Samuel Womack, the corner, him, his explos explosion to the ball, I mean, he took the air out of that bubble. Looks like Pimpleton had some room, and then within three steps, Womack shut that play down. It's good pursuit to the football. Womack's calling card is pass breakups. He leads the Mac. A little uh, run right between the tackles by Lewis. Could not get upfield. So the last two plays have been shut down by the Rockets. Nice job by Zachary Ford, number seven. Zachary Ford, number seven. He's a strong safety, but they like to play their safeties close to the line. They rotate those guys from the nickel back free and strong. And you never know where they're going to be. Ford out of Cleveland Heights. Third down, 13 for the Chippewas. Big defensive stand needed here for the Rockets. Lewis going to keep it on the ground. And again, bottled up right between the hash marks. Kobe Lewis, the ball carrier. Nothing wrong with the call. You already have field position. You don't want to force anything. Sack turnover. Just a simple outside zone play. It's great, it's great defense, especially by David Hood standing in his gap. Not letting the ball get outside the defense, but from a coaching standpoint, you play to your defense. That's that's the unit that truly got you the field position, the turnovers. Protect them. And the one way you protect them is you don't force anything and give them the ball here. You flip the field and say, go 90 on the defense that has been stopping you in the second half. Fourth down and 12. Elzinga catches the snap. Gets rid of it. A little uh, rugby style kick there. It'll be down at the 24 yard line. 24 yard punt. No return. And we'll take a timeout. Under nine to go in regulation. One possession game at the Glass Bowl. When you think about 2021 Toledo Rockets football, you have a versatile guy coming back at number 22 in Bryant Kobach. Yeah, you see he can play well in space, stays on his feet. Great body control. Look at the vision. He has the acceleration that you like. Now watch the stiff one. Oh. Mean guy. You can use him in the pass game. It's connected right there. That was the first score, but this is a guy you can use. He's in every down back. He can run inside, outside. He has great hands. And if the ball placement is there, he's coming down with it. First down and 10 Rockets. Down by six here on their home field. Kobach gets the handoff, runs right. Very minimal gain, picked up a yard, second and long coming up. Well, the Chippewas trying to do something that they haven't done since 2008. That is win a game at the Glass Bowl. They picked up a win. Back in the 2008 season on October the 25th, it's been 4,428 days, Marcus, since the Chips celebrated here at the Glass Bowl. Incomplete pass, third down and eight. That timing really hasn't been there in that passing game. That, 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 that's a throw and catch that they make in their sleep. Isaiah Winstead with the drop. Carter Bradley thrown off his back foot. I got a fun fact for you about that day. You want to know something All about right. that? The last time Central Michigan won in this stadium? I was a grad assistant. I was a grad assistant for the Chippewas in 2008, and uh, I was on that staff in this in the same stadium. I was in a different area, coach's box, and I was trying to pick up on that tricky offense that they had. And maybe I might have stole a few signals. I don't know that they helped the Chippewas pull that off. <laughs> well, the Chippewas 
Record a sack right there, Marcus, as they drag Bradley down. Let's see the sack again. Brown got in there, number eight. Well, these linebackers are, have really taken over the football game. And linebackers as in, talk about 17, George Douglas, Troy Brown. Saw a delayed blitz. They uh, got a sack series before. And then when you look up here, Brown does it. But the coverage on the back end has made all the difference. High spiraling punt by Bailey Flint and the catch made by Pimpleton at the 42. So the Rockets stall out. Chippewa's ball will take a timeout. Well, the Toledo Rockets have given up what was a seven-point halftime lead, but in the last series, Marcus, they rose to the occasion. Yeah, and, and they were at midfield, too, in a crucial situation. You see those guys getting to the ball, linebackers. You see Womack, Danny Bolton, guys running around, and they did a great job up front. Now, to the credit of Central Michigan, I don't think they were being as aggressive either. You know, but at the same time, it's a one-score game. Nobody wants to make that crucial mistake. So it's coming down to a chess match in this last eight minutes. All right, here we go. First and ten. Football at the 42. Central operating in their own territory. That is uh, Nichols, who had the real explosive play of the day, that 68-yard touchdown run that really seemed to ignite the chips. Yeah, I think ignite the entire team, offense and defense, even special teams. We're talking about 53-yard field goals and all types of stuff. So that run, I really think, got this, this entire team fired up. Kowski is in at a tight end position. Brock, short drop, and that pass batted down. DeAndre Reagan. Now, mind you, the question was, could Toledo get another stop? Yes. Regardless of what the scoreboard says now, they're still the number one statistical defense in this league. And so when you have a great defense, it always gives you a chance to win. And that's why Central Michigan, they're, they're really being conservative, but they also know they can't make a mistake because this defense will make them pay. A turnover here could could be the ball game. Yeah, no question about it. Ball security, ball control right now is paramount. Third down and eight. They'll hand the football. Nichols, a spin move. Bought a little extra space, but then got dragged down by Jonathan Jones. Short of the first down by about four yards, partner. Yeah, so a third down run in midfield, and, and, and as we take a look at it, again, just an inside zone play, obviously versus a very aggressive defense. I don't think Central was expecting to get the first down. If they did, cool, but they're saying they want to end every possession with a kick, and, and, and they have the field position advantage here and the clock, so they're telling Toledo, you got, if you're going to beat them, you're going to have to go 80-plus. Nichols over the 100-yard mark with that run, but short of the first down. So Elzinga back out. He's been uh, maybe one of the MVPs of the game with his kicking chores today. And a dangerous fair catch, 17-yard line. And so we take a break with 6.27 to go in the fourth quarter. 23-17, Chippewas. Well, we've talked about the Central Michigan running attack. That's been their M.O. today, try to establish the run. Lou Nichols has been a big part of that. Over 100 yards today on 10 carries. Well, I tell you what, this offensive line deserves some credit, too. They've, they've really got some good pushes, but Lou Nichols, this run here showed you exactly who he is, a one-cut downhill runner. That's according to his coordinator, Charlie Fry, who hit the home run. And I think that play there, that run there got this entire team fired up, as you said earlier. But I also think that defense, the last Carter Bradley, when, when he turned the ball over, I think that gave the defense all the confidence they needed in the 53-yard field goal. It was a turning point, partner, no doubt about it. First and 10, pocket breaking down, and Bradley goes down. See, because... Because Toledo hasn't had a lot of success running the ball, and, and, they're, and right now they're a little pass happy, and they're only down one score. That's a coverage sack, but that defensive line now, they're stalemating everything up front. And, and that's, that's Troy Harrison, a, a guy that, you know, is tough to block. He's got good pass rush moves. And on the other side, looking at Amir Sadiq, who's also – so they're keeping Carter Bradley in, inside and in front, and then they're playing man-to-man -man down the field. Troy Harrison – all over the field today, blowing up plays. Second down and 14. Kobach running left across the 20. 25 tries to turn the corner out of bounds at the 30. 
Finally tracked down by Willie Reed, but not before a big gain by Kobach. That's a good play right there, and, and they needed that. Good lead block backside by Kelvin Aitman. Big tall, right tackle. That's a good play, though, by Kobach. They, but to run the ball is going to be extremely important. Oh, nice cutback by Kobach across the 40, 45. So an 18-yard run on the prior play. Peels off another first down. Watch the change of directions here coming up right there. Oh, yeah, nice little jump cut. But see, I think they're figuring out that the run game for Kobach isn't inside, it's outside. And you saw big Luke Durger got out there on the perimeter, the left guard. You start getting in linemen second level, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a big run. Kobach lining up behind Bradley. They couldn't block for him that time. He is brought down by the Chippewas. Who the last guy to get up there was. It's like Robbie Stewart. Well, Kobach has moved down to ninth place all time at UT. And now he's taking a break. Someone else has to make a play for this offense. Going to be Micah Kelly checking in. No 428. Moment of truth arriving. 23-17. Central leading it by six. Toledo with the ball. Line drive pass. It's caught in the flat. 40 down to the 35. Still on his feet across the 35 near the 31-yard line. Jawan Newton, the red shirt freshman out of St. Petersburg, Florida. He refused to go down, Marcus. Yeah, this is a really safe call, and I think it's been there all day. It's just an eight-yard stop route. Uh, four or five piece of the run game. But I, I tell you, if you can get your quick game going, you get your quarterback back in the rhythm, and then if he makes one or two guys miss, then you got some action down the field. So Toledo cooking with gas right now. First and 10 at the central 32-yard line. Bradley, clean pocket. There goes the home run shot downfield for Winstead. Broken up incomplete. I, I, I tell you, true freshman down, Dante Kent. Like the or something, but on the I'll, I'll tell you this. The coverage he just had on that play, right here, a true freshman being able to still run down the field and probably should have intercepted the ball. It hits the goal post. That young man is all right. But the coverage, the way he was on top of the upfield shoulder for a true freshman to stay on that route and that kind of leverage stayed alive almost intercepted it and then bam right there get the left leg and knee it's a good thing they have those things padded yeah no question about that how about the old days markets when the goal posts were right at the goal line how about that <laughs> it's all kinds of old nfl films guys running into the goal posts well, good to see him up. Out of the great city of Harrisburg, PA. Dante Kent. I was not surprised to see them take a shot at Winstead. Second down and 10 now for the Rockets. Rockets with losses to Western and also to Ball State. Grand total of six points. Man in motion is the tight end, Rossi. Back to throw. Little screen pass. It's caught by Rossi. Wow. Cut down at about the 30. Nice defensive play. Turned in by the Chippewas. That might have been Brandon Brown. Nope, Troy Brown. Yeah, Troy Brown. It, that play was out the gate, and Brown athletically somehow made that tackle when he should have been blocked and that ball is running up the sideline but that was a good call on third down I mean second down for uh, Toledo it, it didn't get executed as well but it was there and Brown just made a play Rockets are two for seven on third down this half and this is a crucial one under three to go Bradley with the pressure coming fires a pass it's caught by Kobach shakes a tackle and down at the 16 13 yard pickup good call defensively as far as the blitz but his his course out of the backfield once again 
is 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 what made him become wide open. That's a great catch right there. It wasn't working when they went to the left side, but this time to the right, they were able to connect on it. And the way he stayed up to get extra yards gives them a lot of a, a high chance to have success. First down and 10 in the red zone now. Ball at the 16-yard line. Bradley steps into a throw. Line drive pass intended for Devin That's Maddox. Easy. Broken up. Devin Maddox. Troy Brown again on the defensive coverage. That one had smoke coming out of it. And <laughs> defensive coordinator Rob Aikens, he's dialing up the heat. He sees his defenses on their heels, but he's actually calling some pressure. And they're, they're getting back there to Bradley, but he's realizing if he gets rid of it quickly, then he can probably complete it. But that was good football on the defensive side there by Troy Brown. Second down and 10 from the 16-yard line, approaching the two-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Six-point game. Now Bradley in trouble. He's sacked by Troy Brown. Troy Brown's taking this game over. There's no other way to save the last three plays or so. This delay blitz is becoming hard for that Lost offensive line to pick up. You see right down the pipe, I mean, right down the two for the no, offense, and, and nobody picked him up because he's blitzing line. from the second level. These offensive linemen see the guy in front of them, Dave, but then when you get the back on the play action, he better get. He better be in that right hole or it's going to be a sack. Back to throw. They block well for Bradley. There it goes to the end zone. Back corner. It is caught. Touchdown, Rockets. Hold in by Jawan Newton. His second big catch on this drive. It ties it up. 23-23. Well, he put it right in the eye of the needle, Marcus. That was his best throw of the day. Back shoulder, 40 yards down the field. Richard Bowens was in coverage. That's a gutsy throw. It's a big-time catch, though. Especially, how about the resolve of the Toledo Rockets after that sack? Backs to the wall. Let one go. Thomas Clucky trying to break the tie. The he does. The PAT is good. The Rockets lead 24-23 as we look at the 16-yard strike again. See, they put pressure on Bradley and he and he he didn't have a clean passing window he was running around this time you get into your long yardage defense and you give him too much time to read the defense no pressure no one in his face he's gonna make you pay Newton's second TD catch of the year it's been five years since the Rockets lost back-to-back -back home games okay and they want to make it a little longer yeah the, you can see on that last drive, they came out, made some plays. Started with the running game. I think I think the running game with Kobach opened up some of this passing game stuff. But Central Michigan for a hot minute, Troy Brown, I said he's taking this game over. But as long as Carter Bradley's on the field with those weapons on the outside, anything's possible. That's an 83-yard drive, Marcus. 11 plays. Yeah, that's a big-time drive, and they took some clock too. And now Central Michigan's going to have to figure out a way get some field position and try to against the wind passing and fielder 133 24 23 rockets here comes the kick it is a deep kick it'll go through the back of the end zone and so Chippewas will have one final possession. They brought a squad of about 60 guys here today. They took the bus down here, got to the field about 1 o'clock for a 3 o'clock kickoff. They have come out with, uh, well, a great effort on both sides today. There you see Jim McElwain. Coach McElwain stays pretty cool, calm, and collected. He's an even kill guy. Seen a lot of things happen, but, he, you know, I, I, I tip my hat because of his the game plan and some of the things that they ran the 10, trying to keep this defense off, off balance. Line. Some things worked, some didn't, but it gave them a chance to have a chance. They'll snap it back to Brock. 
He gets away from the pressure and has some room to run. He'll make for the boundary across the 40. What a run by Ty Brock. Wow. Looked like he was going to go down in a heap. For a hot second, watch the replay. It's going to look like when no one's open, it's an all-out blitz. Man, man, right there looked like he was giving up on it. When you lose contain as a defensive lineman, especially in man-to-man -man coverage, there's nobody else left. You cannot lose contain on the quarterback. Great job by that offensive line keeping him alive. Zach Ford went tearing across the field, number seven, to get him out of bounds. First and ten. Back to throw. Brock pass dropped by Lou Nichols. Now, one thing that uh, Jim McElwain said that I found very interesting, especially talking about Pimpleton, he talked about uh, slices of the passing pizza for Brock, for Pimpleton, for Bracey. We've seen that today, and I'm just wondering if we might see it late if they need a big play at crunch time. They're about 30 yards away from having a chance to win this football game. Remember, Meter has kicked two long field goals. Ball gets knocked away from Brock. They pile up for it on the boundary line. Let's see. Was that a live ball or was he flipping it away? The Rockets seem to have it. I haven't seen a call yet, Marcus. Rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by the offense. Timeout, Central Michigan. And a sigh of relief coming from Mount Pleasant right now. All of their fans near giveaway here, which would have been the ball game. Central will retain possession and a timeout taken by the Chippewas. 1-11 to go. Well, we have a second. I want to thank John Morris on stats today. Great job. All his help in the booth. David Ashbrock, our producer. A job well done. And what a great crew. Putting by the defense. Reinstate Central Michigan's timeout. Well, wait a second. Now they're saying recovered by the defense. Is it Toledo ball? That would be quite a reversal. Anyway, a big thank you to all the crew working today. Great pictures, great replays, great graphics. Thanks so much. They did a great job. Even we got our sky cam. Love the sky cam. We'll visit the chiropractor next week, maybe, but <laughs> right. loved it. What do you think happened there on the sideline, Marcus? I'm sure we'll get another look at it here, but uh, odd that they would make Early one announcement. The fumble recovered by the defense. The previous play is under review. Okay, it's going to be reviewed. The replay official in the booth. So what we need to see is who had possession of the football before everybody went out of bounds. I'd like to see when it comes out. Let's see what we have. Brock on the move. And we'll see who got to him to force it. All right. He lost, lost Terrence the Taylor. The big fella, Hines. They're saying he wrestled it down, Jamal Hines. You'll see Taylor take him out here around the legs. Oh, yeah, and Taylor uh, looks like his arm hit Brock's arm on the way up. Ball flips out. There's a jump ball there. On the ground to tie up. Right here. Boop. Ball's out. Taylor. Now right there. That's where the fight happens. For the football. Who has the ball? I don't really know if you can. I, Kate Klimczak, the reformed defensive lineman playing on the offensive line today as a guard. He went flying for that football and grabbed it. And is it conclusive enough to overturn? Because the original call was Central Michigan's ball. And then it change the call on the field. So is this enough evidence to say that the offense had possession now? You know in 50-50 balls. The ruling of a fumble is confirmed. The ruling of a recovery by the defense stands. First and ten Toledo. There we go. That's ball game. Toledo recovers the fumble. They had to put that timeout back on the off team unless they maybe they already did it but two timeouts he had out of door. Oh, they, they, they gave him their timeout back. Yeah, 
1-11 to go. So Toledo gets the turnover. They will snap it back to Bradley. Into the hands of Kobach. He's not too concerned. He stays on his feet. They'll force the Chippewas to take a timeout. Stops the clock with 104. A late 83-yard scoring drive by the Rockets. Wiped out a six-point deficit. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if you really want to lose five yards on that play, but at this point it becomes a clock situation. Toledo capped off that go-ahead score drive on a third down and long with their backs to the wall. Incredible. This game has sort of ebbed and flowed, Marcus. You never could quite tell what it was or who was going to do what, but you knew some, it was some action coming after that halftime. And the way Central dominated that third quarter is kind of said, well, if you're going to win, Toledo, you got to go 80 yards. And now if Central Michigan is going to win, they've got to get a stop and drive down, but they just didn't take care of the football in that last possession. I thought the three timeouts, pretty decent field position. They had a real shot. Well, we talked about guys like Terrence Taylor, Jamal Hines, Deswan Johnson all day on that Toledo front four. And it ends up being Taylor to make the decisive play separating the football from Ty Brock. And that young man right there, he's, he's, he's had an All-American kind of day. I mean, Brown behind the line of scrimmage, down the field. I mean, he's playing with a lot of energy and effort. Now, right now, third and 14. Central has one timeout remaining. 1.03 on the clock. So with timeouts in their back pocket, they've been able to string this out a little bit. Total yards today, Marcus. Toledo, 375. Central Michigan, 362. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we had a one-point game. The difference, for real, the most lopsided part was the turnovers, 4-1. to one. So, I mean... Toledo is very fortunate to still be have a one-point lead losing the turnover battle. You don't see that very often. Got three INTs. And a fumble. Third down and 17. Bradley into the hands of Kobach. There he goes right up the middle. Gets into the defensive secondary. Still on his feet at the 25. Down to the 20-yard line. That'll put it on ice. First down Rockets. That's a great run. Inside zone versus the pressure. You got guys missing. You can't dive at this man's legs. You have to put your eyes on the football when he runs. That's the only way he's going down. Incredible day for Bryant Kobach. Victory formation for the Toledo Rockets. Final 25 seconds will click away Jim McElwain and Jason Candle, two of the premier coaches in the Mid-American Conference. Congratulate each other at midfield. And boy, just watching this game today, Marcus, Toledo wins at 24-23. You have to be excited about some of the talent on these rosters going into 2021. Yeah, it's going to be fun to see some of these guys returning. Carter Bradley and Troy Brown and these guys. Both, both teams recruit well. Lots of talent. That's why the Mac West is very competitive. And uh, any of these teams, I think, could have came out of the West. It just came down to matchups. Well, that's going to spoil it a little bit. Some words exchanged, and they're trying to get all the players separated. No need for that right now. Season is over. Well, that last drive by the Rockets. That was the uh, the difference in the ball game. Yeah, they, they really needed to establish the run game in this first play, giving it to Brian Kobach. Then he comes back again and hits another one. So when he gets two big runs to start the game winning drive, then he comes back with a great catch. Third down right here, stays up. After a couple of sacks, David Wilson, 
I can't say enough about that. Incredible catch by Jawan Newton. And fact, here's you the ice it. Yeah, this is the icing on the cake right there. Running for the first down. Kobach seals the deal for the Rockets. Final standings in the MAC West and the East with Buffalo winning today. 5-0 to top the East. Ball State wins the MAC West Championship. Toledo and Western Michigan end up tied 4-2, tied for second in the West. That was a three-point game when they played. Interesting way the season plays out here. Yeah, definitely. And when you look at the middle of the pack of, of the West, you see from Western to Central Michigan and Toledo, they were all right there with each other. Good win. You always want to end the season on a high note. It just makes life better in the offseason, and that's something Coach Candle wanted to do and keep the Toledo culture rolling. You know, thanks for everyone for coming out, too. We had a nice little turnout today for the game. And it was great weather. Marcus, uh, great working with you. Always you a pleasure. Great analysis and commentary. We've got to do this more often. Definitely. Definitely. That's going to wrap up our coverage. Special thanks and a job well done by David Ashbrock, our producer, and our entire crew. For Marcus Ray, this is David Wilson saying goodbye from the glass bowl in Toledo. Final score, Rockets 24, Chippewas 23. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.